Well, Max, I teased you about your podcast uniform and you switched it up this week. Yeah, what? Lumberjack? Max now? Yeah, I, I thought, because the thing is, you know, that's my home outfit. But today I was out in the town quite a bit late. So I had my regular, you know, outfit. So I was like, hey, maybe switch it up for the podcast a little bit. Mm-hmm. Got, got your hair all out, you know? Enjoying yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people always get surprised when I have my hair out because I don't really, I don't really have it out much. So it's pretty long, pretty long, I yeah. would say. Definitely, definitely, definitely long. All right, Max. Well, you know what? I think we're just gonna drop this intro, get into it because we do have a special guest joining us this week, and uh, we have some things to talk about. And you're going on vacation again or something like that. So let's just drop that intro. <laughs> Is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this grabbing races. It's hard not to be sense. arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Lefty the Great, with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our city. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Here we go. 100 bucks right here. $100 throw. Oh, no! <laughs> I like this Yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Nitro's the glory, but e-buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 274 of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host, Keena White, a.k.a. Lefty the Great. To my virtual left, or that way, is a Lumberjack Max. New name for you. You're just ramping up these nicknames. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. I, I do have to say... I have not ever uh, took down a tree. Well, I have, but like a small one, you know? Okay. You're a tree destroyer. All righty. Um, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back, Max. Um, welcome back, everybody. We are here doing episode 274. We do have a special guest joining us a little bit later on. Uh, Mason Fuller, the Iceman's coming on to have a little chat with us uh, and have a little chat about his recent race and his escapades this past weekend. So we look forward to that. Uh, we want to thank everybody that tuned in to episode two, one, two seventy three last year, last week. Uh, unexpectedly, a, a popular uh, podcast. The people seem to enjoy just us three sitting around, hanging out, talking. You, me, Kate, me having to uh, reel you in, Max, your titanium nuts and all that shit. Dude, okay, I proved it to you. It's 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 black on white. People like to hear about titanium nuts, dude. Uh, Tony Newland sent me a picture of titanium nuts. He used to sell. It's not a not a not a new idea. I used to sell them. They oh yeah, yeah. One. That's that that was a good thing. He he sent me that one too, and I was corrected. Turns out, uh, Clinic RC, Tony Newland, uh, they they came out with those. I think twenty twenty, but all day they weren't a hot ticket item. But you know, maybe time. I have some changed. more. I have some more. Uh, that's good. I also have some more corrections, and uh, I had a story confirmed that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, before I do that, I want to say thank you to everybody out there, the NNRC squad around the world. Thank you guys for all the continued support. We love you guys. Thank you for everything that you do. If you're rocking out some of our gear, rocking some of our stickers, just rocking our podcast, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we can't do without you guys' support. Please go over hit some of our uh, social medias. I'm going to say Reddit Sociales in Spanish. Uh, go hit some of our social media stuff, our Instagram, our TikTok, our YouTube, and our Facebook. We're all trying to get to some milestone. 10K followers on Facebook, 10K followers on Instagram, 
20k on TikTok and 5k on YouTube. We would appreciate you guys' help with that. Uh, we do know some of you do listen to the podcast on audio only. We appreciate that as well too. Please leave a comment uh, or a review there. Also, a big shout out to the uh, YouTube members as well as the NNRC patrons. You guys go to Extra Mile, help us out financially. We uh, greatly appreciate the support that you guys show us. Uh, you get things like early access. I'm actually going to start uploading some of the podcasts that I have been recording. I'm actually recording again tomorrow. Uh, do that so you guys can hear them. And we greatly appreciate it. If you wish to become a YouTube member or a NNRC patron, you can. Links for that are in the written description of this podcast. Also, a big shout out to these companies for their support. Uh, for joining us in 2024, we want to say thank you to Invisible Speed. Actually, I think I have a package open from Invisible Speed. High Tech RC, Corsa Tech USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Mayaku, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC, Racecraft USA, RC Box Club, Call RC, Elite RC Productions. Did a great job this past weekend. Florida RC Championships, they also did a great job. RC Body Armor, shout out to my boy SJ Racing, the shout at uh, SJ Racing Builds, House of RC, RCGP. Shout out to our drivers, David Runnerfalk, Robert Batty, Alexander Hagberg, Maddie G, Pecco, Ivan Unahat, and hopefully our guest Mason, Fub uh, Mason Fuller will accept his knighting and in, uh, in doctoring into the NNRC crew. I hope so. What I if he declines, he dude? What if he declines? I don't know. I, I think I will be heartbroken because I have been you're such a big cry. supporter of him. Yeah, you're going to you know? cry. We, oh, we were like, you know, before he had any big results, we was like, he's going to be the next big thing. I have, I have been a Mason Fuller fan for many, yeah. many years. Many, many years. Yeah. So um, I would be very upset if he does not accept the, yeah. the, the indoctrine. I think there was the a NMC time spot. in this podcast history where we were like the mason fuller fan club so i think you know it's it's only you know a good payback if he would accept to become the, an nnrc driver but you know and Kaden. Do whatever we, we will doctor and Kaden oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah but Kaden he, we need to we need to ask him personally as well so yes. we need to get him on sometime yes we do when he's he's, he's getting older now all right uh, real quick happy birthday mike agar adrian gibson carlos gonclavis gonclavis i think that's how you say it bill lister Kristen Strom, Mark Styles, who I met, Anthony Bell, another Romanian racer, Creed Nally, Masami Hirosaka. He's like 52, 54. Incredible. Hupo Hanagel, that's another cool name in RC. Brandon Hilda and uh, Will Sheffield. Happy birthday to all of you that showed up on my Facebook. Well, I really wish Facebook would make that a little easier to find. You have to go back and search it on your phone. So much easier to say, hey, here's a, a something on the site. Birthdays. You know, you can say happy birthday. Uh, Max, uh, real quick. So, from last week's episode 173, if you haven't listened to it, Max said something and I've swore it on it was bullshit. And he said that Disney, <laughs> wow, about, about the Italian job race. I was like, no, no way. And it's like, I'm telling you, talk to Mao. He will let you know. So, I, I messaged Mao immediately. While we was doing that, and this is what he said: It wasn't Disney. It was uh, uh what's that? Paramount. Paramount. Yeah, yeah. And so, but he says, "Well, all cool. We have an understanding now." But yeah, it was called the Italian job. It was. I remember he that got, he got. You know, a. Do you know what? That's don't use this name. And that's now what I think called... happened to WRC. Man had to have something. I don't know. But I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure too. Something like that had to happen for them to change their name. It's W I R C. Yeah. Because, man, it was super, super confusing. Uh, also, something that we had to be fact checked on was somebody let us know in the YouTube comments that uh, the exchange for the slot machine, too, has, is actually over. You cannot exchange it no more. It was for a certain time. And now they're shipping yeah. out to people that I guess needed them. So you and Cade were wrong. I had nothing to do with that nonsense. Yeah, well, I kind of wasn't really... Like, my point was just that, because on the Discord, we have had a few people who said that they have not heard from Horizon when they applied to the program and so on. So I'm afraid that there will be people, maybe they live in some area that Horizon is like, yeah, we don't give a shit about this area, or whatever it is, that they just never will get it. So that mm -hmm. was kind of like, 
hey, if you haven't heard, now is the time they're starting to ship it out. So, you know, I, I, awesome. I mean, yeah, but I wish they, I, I mean, I don't have any. I mean, he was wrong. Uh, That's all. He was wrong. You was wrong. You was wrong. Just a minute. Well, I don't know. I don't think I was wrong. Oh I my god! All right. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> Titanium nuts. Uh, moving on. Uh, real quick, let's catch up with you. You said you saw some real snow. Did you like see that snow? Like what? Pictures of uh, videos of what Peko sent me, like out there in snowshoes and stuff like that. No, no, no. Luckily not. Uh, but. Well, I went to, you know, I went the last week and I went up north with my girlfriend. Her parents are from there. Well, I mean, by north, I mean like a little bit above central Finland. But I mean, it's still. So like does it stay daytime all day? Does it stay nighttime all day up there? No, 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 no. Okay, not, so it's not, like, that... not like the absolute north, but you know, like five hours from the south. And, and it doesn't stay dark all night? Not anymore. Day? The worst is like before Christmas. That's like the worst. Now it's pretty good, actually. It's like until like four, it's light. And then out. it goes to daytime all day. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like uh, maybe like I'd say May. Then it starts to be like light all the time. Yeah. But yeah, there was snow. Okay, so when you looked out the window, <laughs> you saw fucking snow, like stacked up against the window. Yeah. Oof. Like what? Almost. What if what the fuck? One and a half meters of snow. What's that? Like uh that's uh like, like five feet. Know. Yeah, like five feet. Yeah. Yeah, five feet. So you have snow. to shovel your way out of the uh snow. Well, not like every day, but yeah, they, they had been shoveled the way out. What yeah. does one do in snow like that? Well, I don't fucking know, and I'm really happy I don't live like above the snow. because since here where i live it's a little bit of snow but like where joseph lives in in like the coastal area there's like almost no snow at like at the roads and shit so it's like pretty good oh you don't live near joseph not anymore my parents live near there i uh, live okay. in the east i live all right yeah you go in school you go in school yeah in school. how could i forget all right so you saw a lot of snow and then you just were hanging out with your girlfriend's parents being a vegan <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if you had nothing but meat to eat there? What would you do? Like, I'm sorry, Max, but you know, with all this snow, we only have reindeer balls to eat. So, um, and whale blubber. <laughs> there aren't whales in Finland. Uh, There's ocean, right? No, I mean, we don't have. You were a like, seafaring na nation at some point. No, no, it was Norway and Sweden. We aren't like that. We we have well, only use nomadic England. nomadic reindeer herders that slept in tents and use hacky sacks with leather straps to fight people. The Sioux army, yes, yeah, pretty, it wasn't yeah, Vikings. Army. That's how I know it's true. Yeah, but it's different. Like the the OG Finnish people, like Sami people, which is very different from like yeah, the I know. Vikings. The I know they were very different. They were like wore like cloth clothing and no armor and yeah yeah they they were kind of like the Nomadics. american kind of like american indians you know yeah they were like, nomads i know yeah. i was I've, I've been doing some research on them all right um so what's been going on in my life is we got a <laughs> my wife yes <laughs> my wife oh yeah i want a dog hates dogs but once a once a fufu like she wants a shih tzu you know and she finds one for a good deal here. She goes, I'll pay half, you pay half. I'm like, huh? How do I get wrapped up in this deal? You know? Uh, I have two pit bulls already. So anyway, about a day before I go away, she gets we get this dog. <clears throat> and she's named Linda. And it's a beautiful little dog. But holy shit. This dog is like a ball of energy from the time it wakes up to the time it goes to sleep. It's like my daughter. A ball of energy, a non-stop energy. But I was like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to the office. I'm coming with you. I was like, I have to go work. No, I'm coming with you. I was like, no, you're not. This dog is just like this. This little small six pound, 3.5 kilo, maybe seven pound ball of fur. Beautiful dog. Beautiful dog. Uh, this, and it's smart, right? It's it's pretty smart. It's it's And it's fast. It's like, bing, 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 bing. And when you watch it, right, you see the the hair go. It's like, whoop, 
<laughs> so when it turns, like the hair turns slow, so you just see the <laughs> and the hair goes back, and that little dog just takes off running and it jumps off stuff like it spring up. Like this dog's crazy. Then it's out there playing with the uh, Amer- like my my big uh, bo- pit bull bully dogs. That's just out there playing with them, nipping at them, and I'm like, this little dog out in the mud and stuff. My wife was so mad. But this dog, look, dude, let me tell you, we have my wife, like her, like dogs do not come in our house, like period. I used to have, none of my dogs are allowed in my house. This dog? Outside dogs? Yes. This dog? What? In my house. All the time. I mean, I let him out because she can go out into the, the gate into the main road, but I let him out when I'm out there supervising. And then I, I take out the back sometimes with the big dogs because we have the... Anyway, just... Let's just know, I have a foo-foo dog. I really like her. She's a ball of energy, but fuck, she's a pain in the ass. Hey. And you know who's stuck taking care of it? Me. Me. Yeah. My wife says to me today, why haven't you trained this dog? I'm like, what? This is your dog. Like, like she's dead serious. Why, is this, why haven't you trained this dog? I'm like, excuse me, this is your dog. And I'm like, so about, I said, it's been about three weeks. Six weeks now you had this dog. How's your love for the dog? Not that much right now. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but later on my anyway. Uh yeah, that's a new addition to my family. And um I'm sure most men who have gotten dogs for with wives and children, and my daughter absolutely loves her, and my son loves her, and then yeah, everybody likes her. And she's a smart little dog, smart little dog. So that's what's been going on in, in my life. Uh, and then I'm just been kind of hanging out with my kids too. So um, that's about it, man. That's about all that's been going on with my life. And of course, just following RC and recording with you and other people. All right, yeah. Max. Um, I think that's about it for that. Uh, okay, so we have some some topics of the weeks here. Uh, so let's um pay some bills. And then come back to this. And I would like to say thank you to Invisible Speed for all their support. Uh, actually, after this, I think I'm going to do a quick opening. Uh, I have a, a mail call real quick. I think I'll do that real quick. But we'll see. Let's see. Bring in this up. I'm just looking for this. Uh, Invisible Speed. There we go. Invisible Speed. You can, uh, find links for this. You, you can find links for this in the written description of this podcast. Uh, we have some affiliate links. It helps us out. Stop scrolling. You want to be Lewis Hamilton? Learn something new with Invisible Speed. You can't do everything at 100% maximum speed. You have to be smooth. I mean, when you drive a real car, if you drive a real car, how do you, do you just, when you get to a 90 degree corner to t- turn into the parking lot, do you go like that with the steering wheel? Do you like slam on the throttle and the brake? No, you probably turn the wheel smooth and get on the throttle smooth. Same thing with an RC car. If you want to learn more and make your speed visible, Stop scrolling. Stop scrolling. Stop scrolling. That's, actually, I, I uh, don't know. Like every time we, we do this podcast so often now that like that's fucking in my head to stop scrolling. I know. Uh, here is something that came in the mail for me. I'm pretty sure this is my Invisible Speed book too. That I haven't, I haven't even looked at the first one to be honest. It's just been there. Can Ooh, you it's read? Pretty. I can read. I read all the time and I'm dropping a poop. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Look, the second one looks much nicer, I have to say. Yeah, it's got color. I don't think the other one has color in it, does it? Oh, it has like it's very black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very I, oh, this is very nice. Very nice. It's all in color. It's all matte. I, I think I might actually look at this. You know? He yeah, added some features. he added some uh chapters with Pavel. That's good. I'm there too. I sh- at least I should be. I don't. I I don't think I have the book, but I think I should be there in the aerodynamics chapter. At least. Oh, my God. did you right. make the aerodynamics chapter? I I wrote. I added to his uh, shenanigans there. Oh my gosh, Max! I think it's chapter nineteen, if I remember correctly. It looks good. It looks a lot better than that. Uh, it's nice and glossy, you know. Yeah. Um, and the old book is kind of flat, but this looks good. I'm I'm glad I had it. I'm gonna have a look through it. I got this like last week and I just opened it up. So this is your Invisible Speed 2.0 added chapters. 
now available. Uh, you can actually buy it at Beach RC, Lutz RC as well. We'll put that right there. Uh, maybe put it like that. Um, you can pick that up from those places uh, as well as invisiblespeed.net. And check out the online course too. Uh, we have some affiliate links for that. Check it out. All right, Max, also got another one. All right, so topics of the week. Do you have that video or do I have to bring it up? Take um, out in Sweden. I'm opening up another package I got here. I know what this is. I'll just open it up live. See what type of candy I got from Beach RC. Woo! I got some stickers from Beach RC. Thank you. And I ordered me some aluminum techno shock caps for my MT410. Because I don't like the plastic ones. So thank you, Beach RC. Ooh, what did I get candy wise? I got a sour patch. When I go to Beach RC, dude, I go in the back and I eat so many of these. Oh yeah, they have they always have the candies. Uh, but I go right in the back and I'm like, dude, I'm stealing as many of these sour patches as I can. I'm like, go ahead, we oh. have so many. Thank you, Beach RC, for all your support. We have an affiliate link for that. All right, so takeouts in Sweden again this past weekend at the Euro warm-ups. 10 scale Euro yeah. warm-ups. I, I don't know if I can. Video. I don't know if I can present. I have the video. I have the video. Okay, sh show us the video. But this is this is becoming a thing, you know. There's like this, you know, rivalry or whatever. It's out there. It's out it's, there. It's like back in the day, it was just like, oh yeah, these people don't really. They have a little bit of that. Yeah, you can hear the the moans of the crowd right here. Right, so what we're looking at her is uh, Jessica Paulson in that pink and white car. That's Mac Hampusberg. Hampus, in, yeah. In the green car, and Hampus had already won. He was in position where he could have won this, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. So basically, mistaken. basically, you know, A one, uh, Hampus had some issue. Jessica won that, and then A two. Hampus mm -hmm. won it. So there was 1-1, one, one, but obviously Hampus had a, you know, uh, DNF. So this is A3, like, what, under, under a minute ago. And uh, Hampus is leading. And then, you know. Oh, she took him out. <laughs> yeah. She waited think... for him. She waited for him, but the damage was done. Ooh, Hampus was big mad. David was mad. You know what? I'm so happy that this rivalry is out in the open now. And now they can they don't have to act like we like each other because when they don't, because we know they don't at all. Yeah. And now they're openly rivals, right? So we have the Padawan of David Ronafal campus in this race. This is the same exact arena where it happened the first incident a few yeah. months ago. And we uh, will have the year. Euros there too. It's this is where the Euros there. is gonna be. Uh this yeah. is her home track. I don't want to say more because. You know, I will be accused of taking bribes, and I'm not. I don't think that's what she meant with that. I think she was saying biased. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? I want to have fun with that. Uh, and, oh, man. This, it's out there. Like, the Rana Falk Paulson rivalry, it is a real thing. Like, people, they do not like each other. They want to beat each other. And now Hampus is involved. The Padawan. He's got to yeah. defend the honor. I said, you got to, you know, he, um, and you know what? They tell me that Paulson's going to be representing Poland uh, for the Worlds. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about this uh, uh, when we talk about this race. But yeah, it's crazy because I heard about this a bit ago now uh, from you know through my sources. You know that uh, Jessica Paulson is going to be running from Poland uh, because the Swedish Federation ended up, you know reversing the decision what happened at the nationals if you have a pistol off. And, and yeah basically you know they made a protest which uh, gave her the win of the full drum nationals and then uh that protest was you know complained about or protest of the protest and then the federation reversed the verdict which gave the title back to Rona Fox. and uh yeah she uh, apparently got a bit pissed and from what I heard, um, they they were just they didn't want. Oh, they reported they everybody. I heard they reported everybody, even the people yeah. that Facebook. Anyway, um, back to the takeout. We we would agree that's a takeout, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, because <laughs> if they come all back. Yeah. I think, I think like, if anything's a take out, that's a take out. Was it deliberate or was it, you know, just being cl- too close? I, I mean, impossible <laughs> to tell, but no matter uh, what. It's the, always going to be deliberate, no matter what, in this rivalry. Always. Uh, I, always. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> Even though I think it was. I don't think she did it on purpose. I think I honestly think she kind of just made a misjudgment. I'm giving her the benefit of doubt. Yeah, I know Hampus and, and Ronald Fuck don't yeah. see it like, but we will follow this rivalry closer and closer as yeah. these like race more and more together. All right. Yeah. Um, you also have a we saw a glimpse of what Arizona DNC was. I guess I assume you're talking about the FTC race. I assume yeah. like how the track was and all that stuff. We, we're gonna geek yeah. out on that later. But man, I remember messaging you and saying. Man, this yeah. track's so awesome, right? And yeah. uh, I listened to, I talked to Tony Noonan about it. He told me about it. He he enjoyed it. Uh, I listened to uh, Wheel and Trigger this morning. They had Nick Hernandez on there from TZO. He was talking about it. He said uh, he reiterated a lot of the things that Tony said. And uh, well done to Tony Schumacher and those guys. They did a great job. And this is, I know you hadn't seen this track before, but Joseph's been on. This is the track. Where Joseph took the steamer and I rolled over a Durango. Remember that video oh, okay. he made? He was yeah. at this track, I believe. Okay. So this track's been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh it does, it it would be just like a Arizona DNC. You would you, water. It's like no. it's out in the desert. It's not, it's it's about a, you know, it's 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 out in the desert. It doesn't have like amenities right next to it and stuff, but it's yeah. uh people camp there that has uh, electricity through a generator, uh, water through water tanks and stuff like that. But uh, I heard that the, the surface stayed consistent. The track was amazing. It was very slow, I was told. So, yeah. um, but you know, the av- elevations and all that stuff and uh, just was told how the surface held up. You know, even though it didn't have a monster amount of, amount of entrance, but even just watching the race, I was watching it earlier and just like how easy you pop up. Whoop! pop up and you're on top of that top level like yeah. it's so easy to do oh and and i, I it was uh, anthony who did the layout i believe yeah that's the guy uh, did yeah, it yeah yeah best layout i've but, seen in a long time oh best yeah, layout yeah i've but seen in a long time when, when i looked at it i was like oh my god like because that's exactly how dnc in phoenix was crazy yeah crazy but good. smaller i would say this was uh we'll talk about it we'll talk about it all right max with that said uh let's go on to our next thing and that's going to be and this week's RC news is brought to you by High Tech RC. High Tech is coming in strong and in charge in 2024 with the introduction of our new suite of new chargers, the RDX2 200, the RDX2 800, the RDX2 4, which can charge up to four batteries at a time. Depending on your charging needs, the High Tech gets you plugged in with the power, multiple flexibility, the ultimate and the ultimate reliability you require. You can find links for all of the new uh, high tech products in the written description or below, or go to www.hightechrcd.com and look in where to buy. Thank you, High Tech, for all your continued support. They are bringing you the RC news this week. And we are going to start this right off the bat with one eight scale world warm up has been announced April 27th to the 28th, Casa Raceway in Sao Paulo. I was talking to them tonight. Today, they're feverishly working on the track. There is a new website set up with guidelines on how to get there. I know there's a lot of questions coming up about importation, about uh, visas needed for Americans and Canadians and Australians primarily. All that information will be provided very, very shortly on the on the on the website. Actually, we'll probably by the time this podcast comes out, we'll actually have the. Uh, website up in the written description. But uh, if you're looking for it, I do know Angaro is slated to go, as well as some of the other top Amer- South American drivers. I know Rana Fox talking about going over to the warm up as well. So, yeah, guys are taking this serious warm up, man. Warm up. Like people, man, I, I, why can't Angaro go over there and just make it three in a row? The way he's looking, it's, it's probably going to be. I think, I think Angaro is. By far the biggest favorite. I don't think like really? anyone will be close at okay. like in like I think because when he went to Australia, he was by far the favorite. You know, he was really in practice he was the fastest. Uh in qualifying he was the fastest. Yeah, he, I don't think he not going into the race. 
No, 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 but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think Redovan, it was more open. A- anyone could have kind of won it. But I think now, yeah, it's, I, I'd be surprised. I mean, at this point, I would be surprised if anyone else would win it. Obviously, it's the world. It's 60 mm-hmm. minutes. Anything can happen. But still, like, well, early on pace, I think he's got it. It's going to come down to a lot of, if a lot of these American drivers go, which I hope they do, but I don't. I'm not even going to talk about it. Right I now. think I'm they just, will. Like I I'm think, going to start debunking some will. of the myths there shortly, uh, with information yeah. on the website and stuff like that. All right, moving on. Uh, the 2025 10 scale Ifmar World Track has been announced. Let's bring it up. It is. When I saw this, I was very happy because it is an outdoor track that is going to get, like you know. Let me. Not, well, they didn't say it gets to let me grooves up, and it's yeah, gonna be it's, outside. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be on pin tires. Yeah, I think that dirt, is freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah, but so, dirt. Yeah, I think so. I I actually thought about this. So the last time we've had ten scale worlds outdoors and on untreated dirt was in two thousand eleven in Vasa. So mm. I think it, it's kind of crazy when you think about it because people are always like, oh, we've gone away from dirt or whatever. But to be honest, it has been a long while since we actually had like this a track like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and okay, I want to like stop, stop all these things of, oh, we are going to go back to mid motor or, or like we're going to back to rear motor even. All of this is nonsense. At this layout, people are going to be running their lay down or lay back gearboxes on their tool drives. It is, it's like, even if it's low grip, the corner speed is just so much better with the lay down, uh, gearboxes that there's just no, like, not a competition between the stand up and the lay down. Look at so, that. That's like that. that I think, that's dirt. So yeah. you, you got to be corrected. Uh, the, the, 2018, 2017 Worlds was on dark as well. Oh, cool. No, but they, they, they treated with the sugar. Oh, okay. This is not treated, by the way. Yeah, so that was my whole point, because okay. in 2013, they had sugar tracks. 2015 was Astro. 2017, it was sugar that they used mm-hmm. on the track. 2019, it was indoors. It was effective, like concrete, the, the floor. So this one is completely different. It's, it's like 2011, it was in Vasa. It's actual dirt yeah it's really like uh flat because they they really roll it up with the rollers and it'll get grooved up but it's still natural dirt you'll have dust on top of it you'll have pin tires it's uh, the real deal of tensco yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that i am very excited for that i'm excited for the people of australia as well and um yeah it's always good oh that's a video i don't want to watch that you have a video linker. All right, up next, hot race coming up with carpet tires. Barkham Killick scene testing. Yeah, so uh, hot race released it. I I don't know if they have. I think these tires are still in the prototype stage, mm-hmm. but um, hot race are working on some ten scale carpet tires. Um, Looking a lot, so a lot like you know the J concepts pin downs and the Schumacher tires, but obviously their own design. Um, and it'll be interesting because in Europe we pretty much only have Schumacher. All the other brands who, who make carpet tires are American, and in America they run the American brand. So it'll be interesting to see if Hot Race can kind of, uh, you know, J concepts uh, is big, getting bigger and all too. Yeah, and, uh... but. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing with J Concepts in Europe is that Sh- uh, Schumacher is the one who kind of brings. Yeah, they, uh, like, they sell them. They sell them. And yeah, I know, that's weird. I don't know. So it's, it, it, it's kind of like <laughs> J Concepts probably won't get any like real uh, I think competition with Schumacher. But I think Hot Race has a real chance because they, they've been making a big push in on road as well. Um, so yeah. TZO coming up with some tires too. I was listening to him on Wheel and Trigger. Nick was saying he's coming up with some dirt tires and some carpet tires as well. Yeah, that would be interesting to see how how it will perform. There's Burke and Killick making his. This is a small track too. Yeah, 
No, small. not that small. It's pretty it is small. decent. I mean, size. I would love to have it. That's better than yeah. nothing. All right, but I I can't think it's pretty driving big. around in some random factory. I no idea we're here driving around. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. And uh, speaking of Bark and Killick, he was wheeling the new Mugen MBS one, I believe it's called. Let me make sure I have that right before I sign. Yeah, even more. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Okay. Oh my God! What is this? This looks like titanium screws. Um, okay, bring, anyway, bring it up. Kid. Bring it up, kid. I would like to say that everybody is starting to get their Mugen ten scale cars, and that is a big okay. deal. Yeah, that, that's a big deal. What is this, Max? Is this okay. bloody titanium? <laughs> New inertia tungsten counter shrunk screws. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> last week we talked about the titanium nuts. And, you know, they're light. But what if you want more weight? Well, now we have tungsten screws. You do know, by the way, um, because last podcast we talked about Simo Havha. Tungsten is actually heavy stone in Swedish. Tung means heavy and sten means uh, stone. So tungsten is just basically heavy stone in uh, Swedish. The more you know, guys, but we have those now. So if someone wants uh, heavy screws, you can have them. And again, you know, when we look at the statistics on this podcast, I'm pretty sure people will be like, this is the part I really enjoy. Was this your joke? This was my joke. Okay. You notice I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing at all. I'm not laughing at all. I know, all but right. the joke is that you aren't laughing. <laughs> but you I, know, we're just gonna, everyone we're just, else here is laughing. We're just gonna go. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. When I record, Jake, I'm gonna tell him about all this stuff. Like, I want to talk about uh, tungsten screws and titanium nuts and all this stuff. Like, you're, t- you're trying to gentrify this podcast into. You know, next thing you know, be like, look at these nice, different colored washers, and these, and that, <laughs> like, and then I would no, just, to be honest, I would just when, probably not even talk to you anymore. You know, when I saw the titanium knots, you know, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Then you kind of like just totally disregarded them as cool, and then I heard that oh, Clinic RC has released titanium knots like in 2020 already. So then it wasn't even new and cool. So I'm kind of like neither is your tungsten screws. Neither is your Oh, but that was the tungsten screws was just a joke. And yeah, like just like you were joking about e buggy one day being a glory. Oh no, no, that wasn't a joke. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you are skating on thin ice there, Mr. Max. <laughs> thin ice. All right, we are gonna go into some Corsa Tech USA race scraps, Corsa Tech race recaps, sorry. Corsa Tech USA is your one stop for all things Corsa Tech in the United States of America. You can now purchase all your Corsa Tech range of products for nitro and electric powered vehicles and systems uh, and accessories used by world champion, world and European champions David Ronafalk and Robert Battier. Established in 2022, Corsa Tech was founded by Adrian Bartin, a three time IFMA world champion in nitro powered GP. In GP, sorry, in ICGP, and Oscar Jensen, a five-time EFRA European champion in the electric powered side of things. Corsa Tech, made by racers for racers, all available in the USA. You can find a link for Corsa Tech USA written in the written description of this podcast. Let them know Lefty and the No Name RC podcast sent you, and get yourself some Corsa Tech goodies. All right, up first, uh, uh, Florida RC Championships. At Sundancers, uh, Sundancers RC Club, Port St. Lucie. Once again, another sort of event for my good friends at the Florida RC Championships, Gene, Patrick, Danny, and uh, <clears throat> Lance. They had a little bit of rain overnight, so big kudos to the Sundancers crew. They uh, was out there at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning pumping the water off the track. Got the track ready by 9. They were practicing. They did miss one qualifier, but they got everything done by 11. Uh, now, this track, <clears throat> when I talk about being out in the middle of nowhere, is out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you could get attacked by a bear, a gator, or deer, wild hog, e- attack eagles, super snakes, uh, cougars, panthers. Anything that moves, really, and it can kill you. It's out there, and it has a boat pond, but uh, 
if my boat flips over, it's no way I'm swimming out there to get it. Uh, <clears throat> but it is a beautiful track. Let me bring it up. Do we have the, I'll bring up some of the live stream. It's that Floridian red, 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 red dirt, man. It is, it is this type really of dirt good. that I just can't even explain. I'm looking for a daytime video of it. A little bit of a smaller track. It's run by uh, Paul Couture, who is the president. They had a great event. People had fun. Uh, in the whole scheme of things, it was some great racing, too. So Julian Alvarez has kind of ran away with this the last couple of years. Trent's been his biggest competition. But Tyler Hooks was there, Sean Krause, and a couple other guys. And they made it a battle in uh, Pro Nitro yeah. Buggy. And uh, we saw new up-and-coming Nico Parra, who I have as Colombia's number one RC driver. He uh, got a top five, a top six finish, and it's really good for him because he came up from intermediate and uh, a good nitro nitro round for him. A good, you know, just as I'm following this and looking at points and getting more involved in this in, in this series over the year because I'll be at the third round at Callahan. <clears throat> Man, it's really good to see the points. It's good to see. It's good to see like the intermediate class doing what it's supposed to do, like breed better racers that now go into that top class and race with some of the top guys in that region and get better. Nico Parra, JP Sainz, they're all great examples of that as they both moved up. Both of them made the main, uh, but Parra, I think, uh, let's see, he had some results here. Parra was the one that obviously impressed me the most. But in Truggy, we have Juan Serna, who is still hotly contesting the Colombia's best number one racer, followed by Phil Arroyo, Adam Turrell. E-Buggy, we had Hooks, Oliveras, Rossender. So Hooks beat Oliveras. Okay. Yeah, that was that was what I was surprised mostly about this event. That Hooks, Hooks, is actually, good. Hooks is racing a lot, dude. Yeah. He's racing yeah. a lot. A lot of different... Like, two, he's racing 10 scale, oval, uh, 8 scale. <clears throat> and then uh, in IC Buggy, or Nitro Buggy, it was Oliveras, Hooks, and Sean Kraus. So... Um, it was a good good event. Once again, like I said, I have to give kudos to the track crew for all their hard work that they've done uh, and getting it ready. This is just a thing in Florida. You know, when you have these outdoor races, you got to be ready to ready for rain, right? At any given time in Florida, it can rain, literally. So we're going to let you guys have a look at the track here. This is the open Nitro Buggy C main that we're watching. It's Look at how red that dirt is. Quite the contrast from the track we're going to have a look at her shortly uh, for the FTC race. This is a more smaller, like, like you could race 10 scale her as well, I assume. But look how red that clay is. And it gets everywhere. See, you are out in the middle of nowhere out there. But it's a beautiful facility. Beautiful. It's one of Florida's many good eight scale tracks that they have um, over there. So always good to see. Always good to see. Yeah, so Nico Parra, Brett Kingsbury came fourth. Nico Parra got a fifth. Trent Walker, sixth. Danny Chavez, seventh. Okay, so that's a good good run for those guys. Um, <clears throat> I'll be there. I want to see, see some, because, okay, I think the big issue for people flying over is that these races are just one day. But I can see this, because the tracks look really cool. Like, this track is really nice looking. So I well, think the, like this series could become like actually big if if, if they want it to become. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's huge in Florida, and that's all it needs. Yeah, to but be I mean, in. well, yeah, yeah. Um, I think for now it does its purpose, but I think you know they these this could become like the. Oh, well, you can fly series. in and do a race. I, like my buddy yeah. Sergio is coming up to do the race in, uh, uh Mills in April. So and it's it's yeah. two day race. You can come Friday and practice. You come Friday oh, yeah, and practice. Yeah, yeah. So all good stuff. Good kudos to uh shout out to everybody at the the FRCC. Uh I know Lance and those guys, they're packing up now. They got the 10 scale race this this weekend coming up at SNS Hobbies. So no rest for the weary. He was like packing his camper and I was watching the chat. Then guys are headed out to SNS up in Tampa for the 10 scale second version of the 10 scale race. But uh, congratulations to everybody there. I will see you all uh, at Callahan in a couple of weeks' time. I'll be coming to the banquet as well. He has a banquet. I'll be going to that. <clears throat> and then off to Callahan. Then off to Portugal. That's right. I'm going off to Portugal for the IBC. But this is a track that I haven't been to yet, and I want to go. So It looks cool. I, like I would have liked to have driven on it. I think really at Callahan, there's Teddy. 
I got to hang out with Teddy and his hobby shop, uh, I mean, Richard's hobby shop for a day. I would, uh, at Callahan, I really hope that the weather isn't bad and I want to get some practice on somebody's car on the, on the Friday. So I'm really hoping that. The last couple of races that I've had, the, the track, it's just been bad weather, so I don't want to take somebody's race time and uh, take it away from them. But uh, yeah, next race, Callahan. And then after that, the first second weekend of April will be at Mills Pond, which I've been to quite some, quite quite a lot, quite a lot. Best series, one of the best series in um, in the world in America. And you know what? They are definitely now we're starting to see other series with coverage and stuff like that. Uh, I would like to see like I would like to see like JBRL get coverage. Oh, maybe that'd yeah. be a good thing. So we'll see. I think this is now better than JBRL coverage. Yeah. Yeah, like JBRL in, in every metric. Yeah, JBRL has been around longer and has that prestige, you know. And JBRL also back in the day was the race where a lot of top pros go and all that type of stuff. But the FRCC is doing. I mean, look how fast it sells out. Like people, people gonna just have to buy season passes next year. Like you know, he said, he's like, I might oh, have yeah. to do two. He's he's thinking about maybe doing two sessions, like a. a Winter session, like a winter session, and then a spring session, because they're not they don't race too much in the summer, in um <clears throat> in Florida. Ten scale Euro offer we did Euro offered warm up uh and Euro buggy masses we did touch on that that happened February twenty third to twenty fifth in Malmo Sweden. Uh, this is uh where we saw the action between Hampus and Jessica Paulson. Um, Max, you have four wheel drive was Ranafal, Karap, and Paulson. Your top three yeah. and two of Drabi, it was Paulson, Hampus, and Rana Falk. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, Paulson so, took another win. Yeah. So basically, um, the the big thing or the reason I want to kind of talk about it is because this is the first glance we see of the Euros on carpet. This is the first time ever the Euros are going to be held on indoor carpet like this. Really? So it's it's very yeah because it's always been on like permanent tracks. So okay, I didn't realize that. This okay. a, yeah, this is a fully temporary track. Uh, it's on carpet, so it will be really really interesting to see how what what the people's response to this will be. Mm -hmm. I I do think the warm up was really good. Um, I think Fulger was kind of clear cut. One of all, TQ Carp was really close. They kind of battled, and then mm -hmm. Paulson was there on fourth. Tool drive, obviously, we had this incident between uh, Paulson and Hampus. Uh, Hampus actually took the DQ. So it was interesting because Carab was not in the top three. I think he might have qualified third, but Ronafog ended up taking the third spot on the, on the podium. But Paulson and Hampus both with this performance look to be really strong for the Euros because it's going to be these type of uh, track, this type of, um, you know, conditions. So mm -hmm. it kind of tells a lot. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting euros for sure. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing I kind of want to highlight the whole story is that Ronald Fox definitely having a good time with his dual drive. Yeah, he made it to third, but he was really, really, really struggling all weekend long. I think he qualified in fourth and the seating he was like, Seventh or something. So he's full drive. He's solid, but tool drive. He's had a bit of a rough patch right now. Yeah, I would. I would say that. Uh, yeah. And then his Padawan uh, Hampus. Yeah, beating him, taking the TQ, and then that incident with Paulson, which uh, in the end ends up her her winning. So I, I think. I think. I think at this Euros, it's going to be a, a. I would not be surprised to see Paulson in the finals. Oh, oh Bosa will be in the finals. That's no doubt. But I think oh wow, that's, that is a okay. I, I'm not. I'm just saying. I, I mean, she's made. I the think US she's finals. fast enough. She's you know she's fast enough to be in the finals. Yeah, but I she's been in the EOS finals multiple times. So when it's yeah. her home this track, is gonna be stacked, stacked, Max. this is gonna be stacked. It's gonna be stacked. I mean, it's just a stack to the EOS. No, this is gonna have every top European driver. At this but race. EOS Remember? has it has them too. Not, I don't. Who who is there who is not at EOS? Say one name. Coelho. Yeah, but she's been in the main. Girl has been at EOS. Oh, shut your mouth. 
I said she thinks she's going to make the main. It's but it's still going to be a very stacked main. I there. I would I would be surprised to see her be on the podium. I wouldn't be surprised to see see her in the top five. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Nobody. It, it's. I mean, she probably makes the layout. You know, it's her club who's putting on the event. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. they know they have the carpet. She's practicing on this stuff. Yeah, she win one tool job now. Yeah. For sure, she's making the main, but I think the question is more so: Can he put it into top five? Can he put it in top three even? And yeah, she's really good on carpet. Yep, she is. She um, is. So All right. one more thing I wanted to what say about this event. What else? What happened? What did I miss? Put the put the image up so I I can. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of. Um, I hope they do a better track than this. Exactly. I think. I'm all for carpet racing. I'm all for having the gears in a carpet. But I do have to say this sort of very bland looking track with very small obstacles. There's not a single big jump on this track, really. Yeah, it does look kind of flat. And there's no combinations of jumps. There's a few chicanes. Everything else is kind of 180 or 90. I do, like, to be honest, like when people critique carpet racing, this is like kind of what they view in their mind, this type of track. So I have to say, I would wish them to bring in more sort of a technical layout, not not to, not making it like really like difficult, but making it like at least have a little bit of elevation, maybe a corner table top, maybe a, like some kind of, you know, bank corner or, you know, drop drops or drop up. So wh- whichever it would be, step down, step ups. I think, you know, because this, this, it's not, this, this type of track is just not, it doesn't look cool. It doesn't look fun to drive on. I, I, um, I agree with you, Max. It needs, it needs, it, this is yeah. going to be also, this is going to be showcasing, right? Showcasing to people because yeah. this is an arena. So I hope they build some nice jumps, like cars actually flying, you know? And uh, yeah. I hope you see yeah, something better. I would, I would agree. Yeah, because because for example, at EOS with Pavel making the tracks, they have gone to so much better direction. Like the they last bring, track at EOS, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought him in because him and Jessica are close to, and she will be representing Poland. So you know, bring in. Yeah, that's Hello, true. Poland, Poland. I kind of I kind of wish they brought Pavel to make the layout because then it, I knew I know it would be cool. I think that would be. A very good way also to showcase the Euros um, mm-hmm. in carpet. Because if the track's like this, it kind of puts a bad light on having car- uh, Euros on the carpet track. But okay. yeah. Well, let's move on because we can both agree that this was awesome. Uh, and that was the. Let's see, I'll start her. Uh, that was the FTC race, FTC 2024 at the Nitro Compound. So this was the race that Tony Schumacher's, this is Tony Schumacher's track. You guys know Tony Schumacher. His son, I, I don't know Tony may have race, but I know his son, AJ, is a very good racer. So he doesn't race as much, but they have this beautiful, they have all this acreage. They're in Maricopa, Maricopa, Arizona. So he lives out in the desert. They have some land out there and they've built this beautiful track and it is beautiful beautiful like jq has been there he's raced there greg's been there <clears throat> it's it's just one of these beautiful you know it's a passion product it's his personal track he does have races out there i know that uh rifkin goes out there uh you know uh as well as mayfield so these guys make trips out there to race there and practice there and do whatnot so they had this race come up there the first time they're gonna have mod there which is a big thing like i think this is great right this he understands that having coverage at this race, even though it, didn't, it only had 250 entries, it's not wasn't a big, huge race, you know? Be, having coverage of this race is so good for his track. Like, when you, you know, because you guys, like, this is the first time I've actually watched decent coverage from this race, too. So that made it even better. But, uh, yeah, my buddy Tony Newland was going on there. We had racers like uh, Heckert. So Heckert was out there. Our guest, Mason Fuller, was there. Uh, as well, we're going to talk to him about where he hit the dog and got glue in his eye later on. Um, Rifkin was there. Who else was there? Uh, do we, let's let's bring up some of the results and see who was there. It was it was beautiful, right? I I was very, 
you know, and I see races like this, I start getting excited. Pavidis, Tyler Fencer was there, Camden Lime. Uh, so I'm looking at the top 10 from Pro E Buggy. Let's get a uh, Nitro Buggy. So this had a couple of fast, like a few fast guys, not every single fast guy, but you had Mayfield, you had Rivkin, Hackert, you had Lime, and you had P Pavidis as well as Fuller there. So you had some fast guys. And Tyler Fencer is no joke either. He's been getting very fast. And then in the intermediate class, you had a lot of fast guys like Jack Costasaria. Brian Eider and all these guys who have been hitting the <clears throat> Jimmy Fishback, who's been really fast. I was listening to Chase. Chase thinks he can win DNC, which he probably can, uh, which is coming up here shortly. But great race, beautiful track. Let's bring up a, we had some, let's bring up a video of this track so you guys can see it. Uh, if you want to go see it, uh, some more media, you can go to Mod Media, check out their live streams. I think he did a very good job <clears throat> broadcasting this race. I enjoyed it. Let's bring it up, man. I, I remember messaging Max, and I was like, Max, man, this track is, is very nice. Uh, let me go back to the start of the Nitro Buggy main. There's Tony Schumacher. Let's hit that play button. So, here, so if you're not, if you're listening to this on the audio only, we're watching the coverage of this race, uh, of the Pro Nitro Buggy main, which was 30 minutes long. Man, what can I say? This This is probably one of the best tracks I've seen in a long time, Max. We said it earlier. I really like this track. Like, I, I look at this track, and I'm like, everything's slow speed. It, I, you know, I talked to like Tony. He was like, "Yeah, man, this is like even this jump where they're just popping up." There's like, it didn't take much to do it. It's like pop, boop, blip the throttle, and you're up there. Uh, Westergaard knocked it out of the park. Right? I love this little section. I just really like this track, man. Really like it. Really like it. Your thoughts, Max? Yeah, I think if this was the layout of something like the DNC in, in mm -hmm. California and it would blow up, I think it would be really tough. It would be, it would be not nearly as good. But I think when the track stays screwed and it's like this, this is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's how every, you know, track in that area should be. It's, it's cool. It brings back like kind of the memory from DNC in Phoenix, mm -hmm. like, this is how it was, and this is why it was so cool then. Yeah, and then I, I asked my buddy about the dirt, and he was like, yeah, it's like good dirt. It's not like, yeah. you know, it, it's not like river silt dirt and all that type of stuff. And they didn't, they, you can see they watered the fluff, so they yeah. did not water the the the, the actual groove. track, which, the groove, which actually allowed it to groove up and allowed it to stay not rough, right? It, it's, mm, yeah. And it was very good. But a lot of elevation, a lot of slowing down sections and driving back up hills. It uh, it doesn't look like it, but I'm sure there's a heck of a lot of elevation going up the back there. Uh, I said it reminds me of Redavon, not as big, not as fast, maybe one lane over, wider, maybe a few feet longer on each side. But definitely one of the biggest tracks. And it's like tracks American. It's like American Redavon. Yeah, American Redavon, but super cross style almost. Because you jump up, it's slower, right? You're jumping yeah. up to all this type of stuff. Uh, so in Mason Fuller was TQ of both e buggy and nitro buggy. He got some glue in his eye, which we talk about later. And just before the start of the A1 of e buggy in the, in the Sunday they morning, just, so he wasn't they just ran one main, no, they ran two at least in results, they ran just one. Um, like they just take the top one. I believe they ran two because you could be wrong. You could be right. I'm probably wrong. I'm trying to bring up results now. Um, I don't, I don't find. I just find one e buggy name. Okay, so they any? I thought they ran. Um, that's the West Coast way of doing it. One main. Oh, I thought they ran um two mains. Okay, I am mistaken. Because I could have sworn I thought he came second. Okay, so I was wrong. You was right, Max. Only one A final, 10 minute A final. I do apologize. Yeah. So he didn't start that. Mayfield will win that. Spencer Hacker, Tyler Fencer, Joshua Vigil, Ryan Pavidis. I'm the line on an A. Fuller not, did not start. Uh, but what we're watching right now is actually Nitro. And it started out for a good run. Fuller was on, in front, hit a dog. 
shortly into this, uh, which eventually caused his pipe to come off, had to get fixed. He battled back. He had a little battle with Heckert for a little while. Heckert looked impressive. But after that crash with the dog, it was like nobody had nothing for Mayfield, in my opinion. And he went on to a comfortable win. Pretty easy win for him, I would say. Uh, with not having a deep, deep talent pool, I do think Mason Fuller could have beat him uh, at this race. He looked confident. You know, look at him driving right now. Very defensive. But that one mistake, man, a dog. A dog cost him. Dog, Zeus. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out more about Zeus. Uh, he didn't get hurt. We know that. But, man, yeah. awesome race for not his first race, but I think Tony Schumacher's race that has gotten a lot of attention. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. First time they had this this uh, quality of coverage. And I really like, you know. Dog. It's dog. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. It's, we'll play it some more when we talk to Mason. So, yeah. Uh, I just look at this and I'm like, I, I really like this track. Uh, and the people that I talk to, no complaints, right? You know? Yeah. Like the surface was great. It, everything was easy to make. Uh, Nick was talking about it on Wheel and Trigger. How I was like, dude, like these jumps are like, they're just so easy. So you see that jump that pops up like that? That reminds me of the one jump that when we went to the 2018, when we went to 2018, was it 2018 that we went to? Yeah, yeah 2018. DMC. And we was out there practicing at my favorite track, Santa Barbara. Yeah. I remember as you came across the straightaway there and you jumped up to that top section, it just had a little, like a little jump that just, just and I was like, you would, it was the word, you just go like, man, what? And that's all you do. You just hit it. And then in the yeah. middle of it, you just flip the throttle and it'll just pop you up over that. That's exactly what that looks like. Yeah. Like when you did it and you just skitched your tires on top of it, it's like, ah, yeah, that was perfect. Man, I, I really like this track. I'm geeking out over this track. We go from Florida with that beautiful red clay, smaller track, to this. This monster track. Best track I've seen in a long time. I have to give it a lot of credit. As you can see, the looking at the dogs, dog getting hit, Zeus. Um, great coverage by Mod at interviews, all that stuff. He does a lot of good work. Uh, I heard he might be getting the, the fuel nationals too, so that's good at uh, HRCR. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what I watched. Good job to Mayfield on winning this. Too bad Fuller got glue in his eye and too bad of hitting a dog, but definitely would have, uh, would have, I think, would have beaten, would have put up a good challenge to Mayfield. But you can see right oh, now, okay. Mayfield's just on a cruise yeah. control. Truy won 40 plus. Truy was racing. So he won 40 plus. Um, let's go see some more results. Anything else you wanted to say about this track, about this race, Max? Well, one thing that was weird that no, none of these guys ran Truggy, and also Reef can only run Nitro Buggy. So I don't know why that was like what happened. But. I don't know either. Maybe they just didn't feel like running three classes too busy. Yeah, it could be just that because for Reef and Mayfield, this is like a home race. Mm -hmm. They just didn't seem like traveling over. And then because they didn't run Truggy, Fuller and Lime and those guys were like, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I I think this is this is what you need to be doing prior to DNC. Out there racing, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Out yeah. there getting that race time under your belt. Yes, is this the most? Like, did all right. So what? The Motorama race. It was Hackett, Mayfield, Lutz, and a couple other. Not even a couple other guys. You know, at the Motorama, but still, race practice under your belt. Real racing under your belt. Uh, definitely something you want to do. So they go into, they go into uh uh. DN, DNC with this race under the belt, they'll probably take next week off or, or probably do something. Then they'll be out testing the weekend prior to DNC as well. Yeah. So this for me, this actually would have been the weekend of DNC last year. This was the weekend of DNC last year. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. You, you like this track, don't you, Max? It's nice. I, I like, if DNC was here, I'd be like wanting to go. Yeah, you had some... You, what that memories of 2018? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I like that type of track. Like I love, absolutely love. It's the best type of track you can have because it's you have those big jumps, but they aren't like crazy. It's not. It's bumpy, but it's not crazy bumpy. It's the best combination of everything. It's kind of smooth to me. It doesn't look bumpy. Well, they, too they, bumpy to yeah, me. This one is this one is smooth, but I kind of like the DNC how it was back then because this is mm. only like what two day race I think. So DNC was four days, so obviously get quite a bit of more more stuff going. But 
Yeah. Yeah. I miss it. I, I miss it. Kudos to Tony Schumacher and everybody that went down there. Everybody I talked to had a good time. Uh, I, I I see this as being a great Walmart race or a race where people go to. Uh, I'm not sure on amenities, like how close it is to people, to things. I know, like they don't have, they have to have, they have to have water trucked in and have big tanks for water, they have a big generator for electricity. Because it is out in the middle. Like we, we, well, we looked at two extremes. We looked at Florida where they have alligators, snakes, and bears, and cougars, and poisonous stuff. And then we're out in the desert. And they have poisonous stuff too, like rattlesnakes, and scorpions, mm. and attack rats, and all this type of stuff. So, both different cases, different coasts, good racing on both coasts of America, red clay dirt to the like Everglades in Florida to out in the desert. And uh, be- I had a beautiful weather, like in the 70s, high 70s was the hottest it got, which I don't know what it is in Celsius. So, perfect weekend. I think perfect I- weekend of Marcy. I- I- I'm funny. saying it because I wanted to, I-, I-, I look at this track and I-, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Well done to everybody there. Well done. Let's see. Let's look at a few more results here uh, before we go anywhere. Nitro compound. Open a buggy main. Yep. Jimmy Fishback, who's been on a tear. Ryan Reese, Jared Kazakaria, Chris Nelson, Aaron Jensen. So they say that uh, Tony Newland, he finished. Uh, where did he finish? I just saw him. He finished 11th. Out there trying out those new Sparco cars. Yeah, those those things are... Those things are everywhere now. Everywhere. Sparko is very popular. Well, congratulations to all the podium finishers who bra- went out there and braved the desert. Had fun. Uh, it looked like a great event. Hopefully, I make it out to that track at some point. Max, uh, we are almost to the end. We're not going to do any hot and cold. I know it's getting late. you got to leave. Uh, we are going to go on to our talk with... I think that's it, right? I think we're done with all races. Yeah. I think we're done. We're we gonna don't go. Really have, yeah, we don't yeah. have races next weekend either. I don't think. I can't think of any big. <laughs> we have some races coming up. We will talk about them near the end of the podcast. What's coming up or in the future? But right now, I think our guest is here and ready to talk to us. We're gonna go over to the Techno RC main interview uh, with the Ice Man himself. Hopefully, he'll accept our invitation to become a No Name RC podcast driver. Complete me. That's right, everybody. The Iceman, Mason Fuller. He's here in studio waiting for us. We're going to have a chat with him. Thank you to Techno RC for all the support. Thank you to everybody for the high of the, the, I was good RC news. And uh, let's uh, talk to Mason Fuller. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program and global race support techno rc is excellence in rc view the full lineup of techno rc race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com that's right thank you techno rc for all your continued support let's get talking to mason fuller joining us in the virtual studio this weekend uh who We've said his name many, many times over the years. First, no, not the first time he's been in her. I think he's been in her before uh, when I did my youth program many, many years ago, youth conference. But we'd like to welcome uh, the Iceman, Mason Fuller. What's up? What's How on? are you? Good. How are you guys doing? I'm good. Are you recovered from uh, Arizona this past weekend? Yeah, I'm pretty much recovered now. Got that all go. figured out. Look at Max. Max is looking at you like, I'm proud of this guy. You're looking at it yeah. like the same way you looked at Yana, Yuna. No, but, you know, we're here. Uh, when we, Before Mason came on with Keenan, I said that at one point we was uh, like the Mason Fuller number one fan. Uh, number one. I think I even have a, a Facebook fan badge for that. I had one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. It's cool, though. It's kind of coming full circle, you know. Aaron's What's going on, there. Iceman? Um, so... Of those you don't know, uh, we talked about a Mason Fuller, uh, the older brother of Caden Fuller, Team Fuller, as I talk about him, uh, was at the FTC race that we were just talking about uh, talking about earlier on in the podcast. He was there this weekend. He was very fast. I think he TQ'd both rounds of e-buggy yeah. Yeah, and, and, right. and buggy uh, in his new rides, the s rides. He's made a change from that. There's a lot been going on with you. 
So we're going to have a general catch up with you. Um, I guess Max, you, you know, you don't get to interview people so much, so you can, you can, you can go ahead. Ask yeah. Him. How's it, how's yeah, it yeah. going? So I guess we just go uh, straight into everything. So obviously strong weekend in some sense at FTC. So how, how was it? Did you have fun? How was the track? Yeah. I mean, we, we, mean came we, we geeked out about the track with Keenan. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I went out there Monday, uh, last Monday, and then ran a few days with Camden Line, and then got the cars pretty much figured out. I mean, going into the FTC, the cars were feeling awesome, so I knew I was going to be right with them guys. Uh, and then, yeah, TQ both classes Saturday, and then Sunday morning was gluing tires, had a little glue issue with the eye. Didn't yeah, race yeah. the buggy. Um, and then I had more issues with Nitro Buggy, but was able to still get second. So that was good. But yeah, I mean, it was a good week. Uh, running the cars and getting ready for DNC. Yeah, one thing, one thing I wanted to know was because I don't, I can't remember now. You was at the DNC in Phoenix, I think, a few times, but how. How do how do you like this type of surface? Because you, I, I think you mostly race on like East Coast races, these indoor races, at least the big events. So how was it uh, at uh, at this track? You know, more outdoor, uh, more uh, how would you say? Uh, I mean, hard track, but still like rough type of surface. It wasn't really rough, which I guess I kind of like because I was. I mean, I was fast on that track, but yeah, yeah, it stayed the same like the whole time, kind of like the East Coast races do. Yeah. It wasn't really like a DNC, you know, where it gets rough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it uh, people said it was the grip was good. They did it in water, so that's why it didn't get rough. I saw they had one divot on that like jump back up, like that big jump where he jumped up yeah, to the back. There, I mean, there was a section. little bit. There yeah. was a little bit, but nothing like crazy. All right, so I guess the goal of this was to get you out to Phoenix, get some time on the cars, because you obviously you live up where it's cold. You're not uh you're not getting the time in him, even though you, you went to like the plex, you won that last week. You had some what was your, you had some issues early on in qualifying, you had to come back from. Uh, but you still won. Uh we saw you at SIC, you came third after some struggles, right? Uh early yeah, on. I mean, that was our you first still came third. I know cars, so. we're, we're, we're not criticizing you. We're we're like amazed at it. Like, no, you know, yeah, that's no. what we're we're like amazed at it. Uh but FTC, also, you hit a dog. That's the fun. I'm surprised yeah, can, Peter can hasn't you, come after you. Can you, can, you, can you play the video? I have I, it I up her. The... I have it up her. Hold on. Yeah. I think I do. <laughs> this was crazy. I've so, never seen it happen. I've, no, I've, I've, no I've, I've had I've, my dog hit. I had yeah, a little never dog doing a at an RC trace. Never did yes, while well, we was practicing. And we was up there. Yeah, yeah. And the dog... She, she she ran onto this this straightaway to try to bite a, a, a car and it broke her leg instantly. Oh dang! And I was like, it was like dangling. I was like, oh no, I was I was going crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about this track. So you've I wanted to I was telling Max I thought that this track was very similar to, um, Redavon, right? Maybe not. Yeah. I think Redavon maybe was one lane wider, but I think about the same length as Redavon. And honestly, Redavon also went uphill. Would you be in agreement with that? Because the elevation is almost similar to Redavon. Yeah, the ele- I mean, it's honestly more crazy in person too with the elevation. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of elevation. Uh, I mean, I think Redavon was way bigger than this. Okay, it felt like to me, but this was still a big track. I don't know. Redavon was also faster. I would say this track was. Uh, I listened to. I talked to Tony Newland, and I listened to guys. Guys like, yeah, this track. D- don't get it twisted. This track was not. Like pin it, it was um, you know, a lot of these sections yeah. were technical. We had to get on the brakes. You had a, you had to, you know, like coming on her, you would get on the brakes right there. I'm sorry, there's you, there's you making a mistake. We're gonna go back and uh, get the start of this race. But a lot of this track it's, uh, was, yeah, it was they, 9:24. So it should be coming up her shortly. We just put yeah. it on her till it comes up. All right. It should be more at the beginning. Yes, but I mean, it's like, nine minutes. It's a, oh, it's 30 minutes. That's right. Shooks. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think it was like three minutes in. 
So I, on the, I, I on thought the video, it was a twenty minute five, race for some seconds. It's five hour forty minutes to that on the video. Okay. Five hour I 40. got it. You guys talk, Max, and I'll fast yeah. forward to that event. Yeah, one more thing I kind of wanted to ask because obviously you yeah, you TK both classes, but do you feel like uh how was it? Because at the end of at the end of the buggy main, a nitro buggy, Ryan kind of won rather comfortably. Not like a, a you know total victory or total domination or anything like that. But do you think you you know ha had like more speed to fight him or because obviously I think you know the whole incident with the glue in the eye and so on kind of throws you off the game. What how did you see it? I mean, he did have. He had more pace than me in the main, I think, based off looking at the laps at the end. But I don't know. It would have been closer, you know. The And then I, because uh, my pipe kind of came off and I had to stop with Ryan Reese. Oh, okay. And he put the pipe back on. So that cost like 10 seconds, maybe. Yeah, but, but I mean, I mean it, did, did you feel confident that you could have beat him this weekend? After the tire thing, not really. Okay. I felt confident that I would could get podium at least. I so I guess going yeah. into the Nitro Man, I still wasn't a hundred percent. No, yeah, definitely not. Okay. But I could race, so yeah. All right. But just, just for the just for the viewers, can you like tell how like what happened? How was it? Like, just do people understand? <laughs> what the the eye thing? The eye thing, yeah. Yeah. So I was gluing my tires. And then I was wiping the glue off, you know, when you put the band on, the glue kind of comes out a little bit. Somehow, a drop of glue flung up off the towel, I think, and then right into my left eye. And then I just kind of sprayed water at it for like 30 minutes, mm. just putting eye drops in the whole day. Really? Yeah. I mean, it All hurt right. pretty bad for like a day or two. Yeah. All right, so here's the dog incidents. There you go. You're hitting Zeus. Let's let's go back five seconds and turn it on. I'm not now. I'm. Your dad messaged me. He's like, they got dogs on the tr on the track. Makes to hit a dog. And I say, what? What are you talking it, about, Mike? <laughs> he wasn't like, there. I mean, it wasn't I, really like that. This dog was like so good. And then somehow he ended up on the track. It was like the first time he ended up on the track the whole weekend. <laughs> and then it was a pro oh, nitro man. buggy main. And I was winning. Yeah. It was pretty weird. It was. Um, he hit him, hit him straight in the ass. Yeah, he, he did. You got him right in the ass. He, oh, no, he did not get hurt. I did see that this dog was in some podium pictures later on. He yeah. was there all day. Uh, unusual thing to happen. I just remember your dad, messing, like I said, your dad was messing with you. Did you see what happened to Mason? I'm like, no, I was not watching this live. I do apologize. Uh, and then um, I went and watched. I, I rewatched it. So a very crazy incident. Uh, you said your pipe came off. Now, are you running those reds? Is it a two piece pipe or a one piece pipe? Because I know reds has it, a one piece pipe. It was a one piece. I was. Oh, uh, so it kind of, yeah, just it kind of came off the back. Um, I've had that happen. Yeah, too. straight up the engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that with the one piece happen a lot. Yeah, too. The one piece. I don't know if it's because it flexes less or what's happening with it, but it happens. I've seen it happen to others, and I've had it happen myself. It's much more sensitive to that. It's a little bit lighter and you know easier to maintain, but yeah, I, never, so I can see how it came off so yeah. easy. Uh, yeah. All right, so you went on to battle it out with Hackett a little bit and Rifkin a little bit. It seemed at this race, I think uh, you clawed your way back up to second, finished second. Hackett, Hackett had an issue late in this race. Yeah. He was doing pretty good. Yeah, we were. Uh, he was a little bit ahead of me, like five seconds. We were having a pretty mm -hmm. good battle. Man, I love oh, yeah, this section of that issues. track, that jump up, that Mayfield just whoop, that pop up onto that top. It looks so easy to do. That if, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this on audio only, uh, do yourself a favor, go to Mod Live Media and check out uh, the A final from the FTC race, and you'll see this track that we're talking about. Really nice. As we see a replay of you hitting Zeus, uh, who was fine after this. All right. Uh, I have to say, like, from anyone having a weird weekend of racing, this is probably the weirdest. Like getting glue in your eye from a towel and then mm -hmm. also hitting a dog. Like, what are the chances <laughs> those two things happen at the same weekend? <laughs> that, that, yeah, it was for sure that, wild. You had yeah. a you had a true RC related injury. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. they do happen. Very few and far they, between. They, yeah. Soldering. Yeah. Okay. Like, all right. Um, so let's, otherwise let's you still finish some, second. Some more serious things. Yeah, you, yeah. St you still finish second. Max and I are gonna geek out about this race. Uh did you did you go to obviously you went to Adobe for a few days as well? What did you learn on your cars uh at this time spent in Arizona and testing and at this race? I mean, me and Camden just try to a few shock things, you know, eight hole to five hole piston, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just small stuff. I was breaking in two engines too for DNC. So, I mean, it was just kind of making the cars kind of perfect for how I like them. Okay. All right. Uh, so you are kind of in, you're about 19 now? Yeah, 19. So you just went 19 too, because then you had a birthday like a week or so ago. Uh, I think when we're recording this. So you are like really a, a professional RC racer at this point. Uh, are you living, are you still living at home or are you living on your own now? Yeah, I still live with my mom and dad. Okay, so this isn't. I, I I know also your brother races and your mom. This isn't making enough where you can go out and live on your own right now. You're still young enough to be still living at home and making a a living at this. Yeah, I mean, I try and I maybe could if I really wanted to, like mm -hmm. live on my own, but there's no really reason to. My mom and dad don't really want me to move out right now, so I don't blame you. Stay at home as long as you want, uh, as long as you can. Uh, so what are you doing there? So are you do you have a real job, like another job, or it's just RC twenty four seven now? Well, I just did a a first house, my first house flip. Okay. If, so, oh, you're flipping houses. But that's yeah, a good my hobby. Uncle, to have. My uncle does uh, real estate. Okay. Mostly rental properties, but okay. Yeah, he's kind of helped me get started in that. So that's excellent. That's that's ac actually really really good. So tell us about that flip. How did it feel? All good. I mean, at the start, you know. I was way overwhelmed, but when everything, we actually just got an offer. I think we might close on it in a few days, mm. but did you uh, have to put a lot of work into it. I did. Yeah. Cause I didn't really come up with all the money for it. You know, okay. did, my uncle did. So yeah, I was kind of running the whole project and making sure everything was running. But that's smoothly, great because that allows you to race too. Right. And go out and do these type of long weekends and pursue yeah. your RC career but also have some money, something to make money on the side. Yeah. And then I, if I do like end up not racing, then I'll just continue doing that full time. So it kind of works out. Okay. All right. So w I guess, uh, what I guess you do the house stuff. You do some RC stuff. You obviously can't really race or drive right now. Cause you live, where do you live again? Where do you guys live? Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, like Iowa. So, all right. So how far is that Omaha track from you? Two hours. Okay, so it, it's a pretty decent drive. So yeah. I, I wanted to kind of ask, like, what is your like race program right now? Do you do you race a lot? Do you practice a lot? Or do you do these just these events? Like, I mean, because from what it sounds like, you don't really have a chance to practice at the moment. So how do you prepare for the DNC, for example? Now, well, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it's warm here. I might be able to run a few days at our practice track we have mm -hmm. until DNC, but I don't know. This weekend, I'll go run some carpet with Tom Renanek. There's a track like three hours away that we'll go to. But in the winter, I honestly don't practice that much. Okay. But that's kind of when the races are usually. Right. You know, SIC, AMS, DNC. Okay. But yeah, in the summer, I have a practice track. It's like 10 minutes away. So that's the outdoor track that I see Ashton showed me in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's like in somebody's yard, I want to say. But it's like yeah. off real, like... It's a good it's, size track. Yeah, yeah, it's decent, it's rough, it's... it's, mm -hmm. it's you, you say you don't like rough tracks, but, you, I mean, you got a top three at Silver State last year. I mean, yeah, I guess it just depends. Mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable on smoother tracks, I guess. All right. So, how, how would you say, because I think this is one of those tracks that is very different from what you're kind of used to running in American racing, because... You have those West Coast events by, uh, you know, uh, Joey, which is DNC and uh, Silver State, which are really rough, kind of slow speed, you jumps are kind of what they are. Whereas in, then in the East Coast, you go to these more, um, I'd say technical, have kind of m more variety of, you know, sections, but then you have that indoor dirt. So 
like what do you feel what do you really prefer because oftentimes you know people think a driver prefers something but then actually c- could be the opposite so how do you see it right now like what are your favorite events i mean my favorite events i guess it honestly depends like P and B and Silver State are probably my top two, which are completely different tracks, you know. Yeah. But I just like the the vibes at those places, I guess. And then I usually do good at P and B. That's like my best race usually. So mm-hmm. I guess that's why. Mm-hmm. Now we've been talking about you for a long, long time. Obviously, when we first started hearing about you, he's a little younger. I guess he was about fourteen, maybe fifteen. And you was driving at that. I think you was driving a Losi. You might have been even. Did you? You drove HB at some point before you drove HB. You drove HB. No, I I started with TLR for like ten years. Okay, probably. You was with TLR for the longest while. I remember Barry Baker was saying how much he thinks it's an error that TLR let you guys go. I I would agree with that because you saw some very good results on the TLR. I believe you beat. One of the, I think it was Southern Nats where you beat Mayfield, sneaking by him in a left e-buggy. You've beat these guys in Truggy. Uh, you make, uh, you and your, your brother kind of was very, going very hard at some point and he stopped for a little bit. I think he focused on football, but you, you stayed focused. Uh, I watched you. I, I believe you was on that youth conference podcast I did many years ago. It was like you, Brandon Schimmel. My, I might have be been, you. I don't. I don't it might have been you or your brother, Cody Watson. Uh, Joey Bardon was on it, and I think it was just all talking. You was you was young too, and you still hadn't start like you hadn't really broken out of your shell yet, or it could have been I don't know, but you was like all them, those guys were all fast guys at that time. Like Brandon Schimmel was yeah. fast in eight scale, and Cody and all those guys, and you was a part of that group. But you have the one, the other one that has outshone all those guys, right? You, you've come up, you stuck at it. Uh, we saw you then, you and your brother go to HB, where you saw success at, uh, again. Like, I I pick you almost. I, I apologize. I pick you almost every race. I'm sorry to jinx you like that. But I, I really think, like, you can win any of these races you go to. Um, Like I said, you've won Nitro uh, Truggy. You've run E-Buggy. We're still waiting for that big, big E-Buggy win. You win these races at... You know, and then I started really started noticing you was beating like Tebow and Van Dalen up there at Omaha. And I was like, man, yeah. Mason Fuller is starting to kick these guys' asses. He's like 15. And he is like, remember, I, I used to say, oh, man, the Plex is uh, freaking Tebow's kryptonite because Mason's got him, Van Dalen gets him, you know. And I was like, you know, this guy's the real deal. Then obviously I got to meet your dad and, you know, just – Knowing you guys over the years, I've you become a big fan, big supporter of you guys. But now at 19, uh, you left HB. You had a good two years there, two years. You did the worlds. Was you there two years? Yes. Yeah, 2022, years. 2023. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to stay for another year. Uh you look quite comfortable on uh at HB. I always said HB's number one driver as soon as you was on there, because you was getting constant top threes. Second place, yeah. third place, you know, at these races, <clears throat> your brother comes back. He starts racing more. He's getting faster and faster. You, and then as you, him, as you, him, and Little Bump constantly making A mains, you know, doing very well. Then obviously at the end of the year last year, going into AMS, we heard a lot of rumors what's going on at HB uh, with pay and whatnot. Uh, Little Bump gets out first, you're out next. You guys out next. I guess we we can't have you on her without asking you what happened at HB. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as I know, Pavitis, uh, Fee, me, yeah, anyone who was like a paid or travel guy wasn't getting their pay or travel. So, yeah, that really uh, kind of hurt me. I'm sure paying, it would. I was paying Cadence travel, my travel. And I mean, I didn't have that much money, you know, I'm just 19. So yeah, I mean, that kind of hurt me. So I can't right. stay with HB without getting paid or travel. You know? Now, what did you think of the car, the way the car was going? Yeah, was the car, too. <laughs> the car was fine. Even if you like the new one, because some people just don't like it. Yeah, I, I had no issues with it. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, I just drive it. I don't know why people have issues with it. 
car's fine, but Do, how was it? Because I heard a lot of people kind of went back and forth. Did you ever, you know, try it like a uh, back to back, or did you kind of hit it straight out of the gate with the new front end? I mean, I only ran like five months actually with the old car. I mean, it yeah, seemed fine okay, to me. Yeah. But yeah, we started it way before the worlds last year or two yeah. years ago, I guess. But I mean, I didn't see any point in going back when I was I was still doing good with the new car, you know, just as good. Yeah. And I felt comfortable with it. So Okay. Besides the monetary financial side of things, how was working with HB? Were they subset were they I mean, was the promotion coming right? Was you did you do did you enjoy that part of it, being a part of that team? Yeah, I mean, I like the people, mm -hmm. you know, Cole, Fee, Pavitas. You guys have uh, a huge team at uh, the Worlds. And always, you know. Yeah. So, we did, yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate. So, you you guys decide to leave. We have a big, uh, you know, discussion here in the podcast. I'm like, X-Ray. Uh, I swear, I swear, man. People ask me, who would you sign in America right now? I'm like, yeah, I'm signing a team fuller. And I'll say that yeah. all the time. You know, you know, I've said that to enough. JQ would ask me or Ali Blue, hey, Lefty, who do you think I should sign in America? Team Fuller, you know, or whatever. Who do you think I can go to win races? I'm like, Team Fuller. Uh, you, we know you're moving. Was it, was there a choice between X Ray and S Works or was it always going to be S Works or was there any option, any other options on the table in your silly season? Uh, I mean, yeah, there was other options, but to be honest, S Works was my favorite option you know all right so like, what was it that drew you team. to s works the team i like the team everyone okay. on the team joe uh camden brandon i mean we got a good team and then yeah i knew the car was going to be good i never driven it till i signed but i mean i figured it'd be good that was my first time actually with a pillow ball car too oh really Would, and yeah. is it a big adjustment in driving for you from c hub to pillow wall now no I think they're <laughs> the same. Max but is just I'm like kind of hard to. Yeah, Max would probably disagree. He's no, probably it's actually, I was, I was uh, actually gonna ask this to you because I feel like all these drivers always say that hey, I, I need a C hub car, I need a pillow ball car. I think it's actually more difficult to go from pillow ball to C hub because you kind of lose speed. You have to be faster, but I think it's actually easier going from C hub to pillow ball. Okay. And I think. Especially with the H the HP the more modern HP front end, the high KPI, the offset kind of all match up. But well obviously you kind of went straight into racing with the S works, but do you feel there's like do you feel a difference between the cars? Do you feel like you got something more now, something less? How how, how like did you have to adjust? Have you been looking for setup, like all those kind of things? Uh yeah, how has it started out? We've definitely made setup changes, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get the cars to feel the same. And they honestly feel the exact same now. As They're your HPs? As yeah. Okay. So I Do you and Caden, I'm sorry, do you and Caden like similar cars or do you have completely different setups? He kind of just goes off what I go off of. Okay. You know what I mean? I kind of say if it's good or not, and then he disagrees. Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not just, he's not really into it as much as me, you know? Right. So now are you able, so this little uh, foray out to Arizona on your own, are you now able to probably go to a race and work on your own? Because that's something that you're probably going to have to do at some point. You know, I know yeah, your dad I, told me that you do a lot of your wrenching and all that stuff, but are you confident enough where you might have to go to a race of just the s -Works team and have one of them guys pitch you and all that type of stuff? Yeah, I definitely could now because I do okay. all my own wrenching and I guess I glue tires now too. He was usually doing all that, gluing the tires. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if I had to, I mean, it definitely helps out though. Absolutely, a absolutely. Lot with him there, so did he? Did he instill wrenching in you from a young age, or was you one of those drivers who kind of just watched him for a while, or did you want to learn about wrenching and what and and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, he did it for like until COVID, basically. Mm -hmm. so ever since COVID, I started kind of practicing and doing everything on my own uh but yeah he never like caden still doesn't work on his cars you know he just 
<laughs> He's like, I, I don't know why that he stuff. could. I got time for that. Yeah, he's more into the girls and stuff now. But ooh, that's gonna that's gonna slow him down a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how he does it, yeah, it'll slow him down. He says how he does it, it's gonna slow him down. I like him, but I think he needs to start ranching. I, absolutely. Uh, he, he if do he wants feel, to learn. Do you feel like you've learned a lot more now that you wrench yourself? Because obviously, it's not that long ago, and like, arguably, that's kind of where you made that big step up in performance like post covid so what do you feel do you feel it, that has really changed things for you like the way you view the car on track the way you set up yeah i mean i think so because you kind of see like what the actual changes are and like what you can do to the car you kind of know how it works i guess because he probably doesn't even know he knows some stuff but you know, you learn more about the car just working mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you? Uh, w- one thing that I, it's kind of interesting because a lot of these um, pro drivers, uh, they kind of, you know, learn after they have gotten good. So, for example, working with a few guys, you know, uh, back in, back in uh, when I've had, you know, teammates from America, it's always kind of like they know what they want but they don't really know how to get it or like what direction they should take. And to be honest, it's like all drivers. Uh, It's very slim amount of guys who know what they want, but how do you go about your setup? Do you just kind of try stuff? Do you have someone you ask about or do you, you know, have like, let's say, you know, Joe or someone test more and then you guys kind of go off of them or how do you deal with a setup? Do you kind of go your own way or yeah? I mean, like at SSC, we were definitely asking Joe, Mm-hmm. Brandon, whoever was good on the team, what to do for the car. But I mean, my dad, he's actually pretty good at setup, you know, knowing what to do. So yeah, I mean, I will always ask him first. Um, but yeah, we kind of just test at the track and then I kind of just know what the changes do, know what I want from the car. I mean, I still don't know everything. I'm mm-hmm. still learning about uh, quite a few of the changes, but have shameless have plugs. Base. Have you bought yourself an invisible speed book? No. You need to get one. That's gonna be good. <laughs> Two point over as a writer. I'm sure I could learn a lot from it. Make yeah. your speed visible. But Make your speed uh, just visible. to just to add on to that question, do you like, for example, now at in Arizona where you're alone, do you like message between each sheet to your dad? Because I know like a lot of these young guys, they at least when they start out, like that's pretty much what they base off everything. And they're probably that dad knows better how they drive than the drivers themselves. So do you have a, like a lot of contact with him at races? Yeah, this weekend or last weekend I did. I called him quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. He's probably so, watching you too. Yeah, he was watching. Just mm-hmm. a double check, you know, makes you more confident yeah. with the changes too. Mm. Yeah. His dad wears a laptop, I believe too. So he is pretty smart. <laughs> I have one he more was- setup. Setup question. Did he, oh, uh, did you say Kina said that he wears a lab coat? Yeah. What do you say? He lives. Where's a? Doesn't he work in a lab or something like that? Yeah, he works at a water treatment plant. See, he wears a lab coat. That's okay, okay. <laughs> a pocket protector. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, but one more setup question I had was because I know a lot of these guys, like for example, Robert. He always wants like uh, less sensitive steering, and uh, I knew David kind of wanted the car to roll more. Uh, all of these drivers like uh, want a specific thing for the car, and that's kind of they're always chasing that thing. So, do you have that? Do you have like either with HP or with S Works or TLR? Do you ha- do you know that you're always kind of chasing one thing, be it like rear grip or drive or handling over bumps? Do you have that kind of thing you're always chasing? I mean, lately it's been with the S-Works car caster, just calm the steering down or get more steering. That's what we mess with a lot. I mean, it's pretty easy with that car because you can just change the shims on the pillow wall. Mm-hmm. Or rear toe is a big thing we do. I mean, just the simple stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the main things, I guess. Do you feel like, compared to the HP, do you feel like you 
because those things to, to my ear, obviously, they sound like kind of you're having not, not necessarily issues, but you're kind of finding the edge of the car easier on the exits of corners. Do you find that different to HP, uh, like uh, now with S-Works? About exit? Yeah, like corner exits, like, like do you feel there's a big difference? To, I mean, to be honest, no, now. I'm super okay. comfortable with either car now. Mm. Yeah, so. that's that to me. This is kind of interesting always to ask like fast guys about this because to me, like when the car isn't perfect, like it's kind of like, oh, I'm like, it's not perfect. But every time I ask like, like a pro or like a really fast guy like you, it's always like, yeah, it's close enough. And then you go fast. So it's, yeah, it's I mean, pretty, I'm not very pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you over? Yeah, but I think that's. Yeah, go ahead. Tina. Do you um, do you instead of having a perfect car, do you drive? Do you just out drive that? Like, if your car isn't one hundred percent how you want it, say it's eighty. Do you just put that other twenty percent in to bring it up to, to your snuff to what all you want it? I've been trying to learn that, and then like when the car is not perfect, mm -hmm. I always used to just try and make it perfect by going faster driving mm -hmm. faster and wrecking so yeah i mean i've been trying to just so it makes it better to make a car that suits you let's say that car is 95 percent, and then you just have to add that five percent when you need it instead of have to crash you know so much um but you're still very young you seem to because i mean i watched you at sic you came out i was like man he's, he's struggling with those new cars i knew they were brand new right they were brand new cars that didn't be broken in nothing and then you're on the podium, and I'm just like, I didn't even, you know, it kind of silently happened. Maybe I was just too focused on Brandon Rose and all that stuff, but it silently happened. Um, and I think over the last three years, you've when it comes to, you know, obviously it's it's kind of been the Mayfield and Penn show. We've seen Tasman break it up. We've always said you are going to be the one to break up that that partnership, you still think it is. Rose obviously did it at SIC. Do you feel a lot of pressure to get that first Nitro buggy win? Um, do you feel intimidated by these guys still now, you know, after you've been racing against them for such a long time? You're still young, but these guys are like grown men. But do you, do you, well, that's what I want to do. You feel the pressure, more pressure to get that win? And do you feel intimidated by these guys at all? Uh, I mean, I don't really feel intimidated now. Mm -hmm. Definitely not as much as I used to. You know, when I was like 15, 16, I was definitely way nervous every time I went up there. But I mean, now that's basically all I do is race them. I don't really race anyone else. So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable racing with them now. And then what was your other question? The other question was... um Shucks, I asked it twice. What was it, Max? I forgot already. Yeah, because we think like Keenan, Keenan picks you for the win every weekend last year. Oh, the pressure. Do you, pressure. Yeah. Do you feel the pressure? Uh, I mean, I do. I, I mean, I put pressure on myself to want to do mm -hmm. good, but I don't, I don't know. As long as I'm doing good on the podium, I know, I mean, a win will come eventually, but I mean, I want to get the win, but it ain't like, I'm really pressured to get a win in Nitro Buggy next weekend, you know? I'm putting the pressure on you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, let's I don't want to get DNC. the win too, but... Let's go DNC. Uh, yeah. That's coming up. What do you think? you think you can win it? Yeah, I mean, I think I can. You So, I mean, I remember... Uh, where did you finish last year at DNC? Last year was rough. I was in the B main of Nitro Buggy. Okay, so at... At the 2020, the one that Ronafalk came fifth, you I was in that. Six, yeah. yeah, you came sixth. You was in such a, like you and him battled that whole gaggle of cars, battled an entire mm -hmm. almost main. Um, you know, I, I don't see why you can't win it either. You're on a good tire. Your car's working good. You have a good team behind you. I'm pretty sure like Jay, I, I think, I think Juan Carlos Canas can be a contender as well. He's now he's yeah. on J Concepts tires. Uh, obviously May Mayfield, Fend, Rana Falk. Is he going? I would throw Rivkin in there too. There's a there's a, some steep names, but 
the dames you're going to really have to beat is going to be like, you know, you know, Mayfield fan, Ronald Falk, Kamas. You know, yeah. those, those, those guys are going to be fast right off the bat. Uh, I, I think you could. I think you. So, what are you going to do between now and, and the, are you going out there like a week earlier to do some practice and all that stuff too? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, the cars are feeling good. I might get a few practice days in at our track here, maybe. But I'll be running carpet. Uh, doing as much as I can, I guess. Making sure the cars you, are. Does the carpet help you? Or is it just real time? I haven't even ran it. Ten scale in like a year at least. I haven't ran the cars yet, so it'll be the first weekend with them. Yeah, that was that was one thing I wanted to kind of ask because obviously with HP, the ten scale platform kind of let's say died out <laughs> a bit. Yeah, the two wheel drive release, you know, didn't go that well. But now S works. The polar opposite. They have a really strong team in Europe. Even Joe's going to Europe to race mm-hmm. EOS. So obviously, like back when I first saw you guys at the DNC in 2018, you were, you was like more of a 10 scale guy than eight scale guy back then. So w- w- how are you feeling? Are you getting back to 10 scale? Are you going to be racing the Roar Nats, uh, or is it going to be just purely eight scale? Yeah. I mean, I think S works wants us to mm. run the cars. So we'll be running as much as we can. I mean, we don't have a track, so mm-hmm. it is pretty hard to run it. We used to have a track like in 2018, we only had a 10 scale track, so we just did that. Um, but now we have an eight scale track. Eight scale is more fun, in my opinion. Definitely way more fun. No, but if they say, hey, we, we're going to pay you some more, and you're going to do some more 10 scale, you're going to have to run some more 10 scale, though. Yeah, no, we will be running 10 scale too. Right. Okay. I mean, have plans? what are your like, race program for 10 scale? Are you going to be just doing the nationals or local events, or are you going to be shooting for some like, for example, Florida Carpet Championships or races like that? As we want to go to some of the INSs. Mm-hmm. I think they're okay. all kind of close to here, where I'm at. And then uh, probably the Florida Carpet Championships, hopefully. I mean, that would be a fun race to go to. Okay. But we'll so, see. like, yeah, that's going to just ramp up your whole RC career. You know what I mean? Doing 10 scale. You're going to be busy. Because th- I know that yeah. that is a market that they desperately want to get into in the USA. Right? Yeah. Um, I know they're feverishly working on making some making the cars work on that on the American type of dirt as well. So I, I see a lot of that in your future. Um, all right. So this is a world year. You didn't uh you know it's coming up here very shortly. They got a warm up in April. Are you are you going on to the warm up? Are you going to the worlds? Uh we don't know yet. <laughs> what are we waiting for? I mean, I don't know if anyone else is going. That's um, even uh, more reason US. you should go. No, we're, it's definitely like a possibility that we're going. All the Europeans I are going to go. All the Europeans are going. Don't worry about who ain't going from the States. That's just less people you have to beat. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I, I implore people to go on. Um, I think you should go to the warm up in April. Yeah, make some time. Get on there and race the warm up. Go to Brazil. We might. We'll just have to see how it goes. Would you be so? A lot of the complaints going into Redavon two years ago was, "This is a permanent track. People practice on this track all the time." Blah 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 blah. Uh, we have a brand new track that uh, the Brazilians will have some time on it. Yes, but uh, you know we have a neutral track. I would say. Yes. Yeah, so do you think you need better. to go to the pre? The, do you think you need to go to the warm up? If or if you're not even sure if you're going. What type of preparation do you make for a race like that? Well, I guess we'll have to look at the tra- I haven't even seen the track, to be honest. But they're building it. So I know the guys that are building it. They're like renovating everything. It's like that. It's almost like red, sandy um, clay. So kind of more like a West Coast? No. No? More red, like North Coast, but with a little more sand and stuff in it. I mean, I guess we'll just have to see. I want to go. It'll be up to my parents if we go or not. It'll Does the thought of winning a world championship something that you want to do in life? To win the world? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I have to ask yeah. sometimes because now some people just look at it as just another race. It's not just another race. You yeah, know? I mean, it's the biggest race to win. So, yeah. I mean, I would love to How win. was... 
how was the world uh, you last time you went in Erevan? Like how? Because obviously, maybe compared to your success in America, it. I don't know how you view it, but I think you know. You was a bit more off from Ryan and Lakota at the end there. So did you like was it like that, or do you think it just level of competition is so high? It, it's a like a different type of race for you, new type of experience. How how was it then? Because I think that was the only and at least first time you went to, to a big race in Europe. Yeah, I mean this that was a crazy experience for me. I mean. Yeah, I never really was comfortable to be honest at the worlds. I don't know if it was we had the wrong compound attire or I don't know. But yeah, I was definitely way off pace. I think I got like 28 or something. I was in the quarters. Middle of the quarters, whatever that was. So yeah, it was definitely a pretty bad race for me. What was it about Redavon that made it hard for you? The size track mm. i don't know it was just a completely different experience from everything i've ever driven on just like speed wise too like the amount of speed kind of high too. speed yeah yeah I don't people know. who's never been to that racetrack will never really understand how fast that track is and how big it is mm -hmm. like we look at that fct race and you got all those all that the slow sections and all. it was very slow right you're jumping on well, yeah. you have that in Radovan. It's like jump on and go, jump up and it's ging, you know. It's, <laughs> it's straight through these whoops. Sure. Like it, it, coming up past that straightaway, you think these cars are gonna break the engines, like you know. Yeah, because the straightaway goes like uphill, like I know quite a bit. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Do you think? Do you think um, think, go ahead, Max. Yeah, about Radovan, because obviously, for me, coming first time I came to America, it was very different. Because I always thought, you know. Back when I'm from Finland, we our tracks are low grip, but the layout of the tracks is still very European. We have very flowing, quite high speed tracks, very big tracks too, you know, 40 second lap times and so on. And then when I came to America, I thought, you know, uh, yeah, I know how to drive on low grip, but it wasn't like that. It was very different. So after that, I kind of had to, you know, readjust a lot of things in the way I view races from America. So for you going to Redoman, do, do you think you got that kind of you know, experience that you could look back on and think, hey, I can do this differently. Maybe I'm not as good as this thing as I thought it'd be. Or do you think you know you kind of just had a bad event? How did you view it afterwards? Uh I mean I think I definitely learned a lot. I think if I went over there again, I would mm -hmm. do way better if i would have went to the warm-up i think it would have been way better off warm but, up for worlds april brazil yeah, if, we get, if we go to the real world you'll go you'll go <laughs> you got a european i want to go you got a european owner you will be going to brazil i want to go so yeah i uh i look forward to it man what is well uh, one race you wish you could get back that you almost won uh, P and B for sure. Oh yeah, the, I think it was last year. Maybe I got second. I don't know. I think I maybe two years ago. I don't even know. But yeah, Price I think I could have top threes. We can't remember. I remember one year you had you were one of those guys who didn't do the joker lanes, so you was effectively leading one year. I remember that. And, and then, then yeah, and then I crashed. And then yeah. So yeah, I think I could have won P and B. What has um? You're still young, very determined. You still get. You don't look like you get phased much. What has been? What has kept you driven all these years to can pursue this career? Uh, did you have other interests when you was coming up as a, a younger person in school and whatnot? Uh, not really. Okay. I mean, I really, I do just love it. Now working on stuff, I like working on stuff, building kids, mm -hmm. wanting about everything. I don't know. I never really did anything else besides this so okay how long have you when did you start racing then when i was five so 2010 <laughs> so you did your dad used to race or uh he raced like motocross and then he kind of got hurt and then okay. he wanted us to do this instead of motocross because he got hurt so bad 
So you've been racing a long time. You've been racing 14 years. Yeah. Basically all my life. Is there a, a race or track in the world you'd like to attend? Past or present? A race or track? Race, track that you've, you've seen. Maybe seen a video of it. Mm. I don't know. Do you geek out on videos like that? Do you watch a lot of RC footage? I do probably. I mean, not near as much as you guys, but yeah. Do you I watch do. yourself a lot, or do you watch other people? No, I don't watch any of my races or anything. Okay, like that. I don't know. I would just want to go to Australia, really. Really, you didn't Race go in twenty eighteen? No, well, we okay. weren't even really doing ASCO then. Mm. It feels like it was so not so yeah, long just, ago. We just started ASCO in like twenty twenty. Really oh, wow. started ASCO. Oh wow, that's even more impressive. Actually, you look like you want to ask him something. I'm, I'm kind of like amazed how, like, because you know, obviously from interviews, you know, it's different because you kind of get you know a few sentences in. But I'm mm-hmm. kind of amazed how you know relaxed you're about everything because he's the ice I, man. I, I, yeah, so I, I th- now I know why people call you ice man because a lot of drivers you know have this for example about the car thing they they are kind of like really strictly oh i want my car to be this but they they don't really have you know set up knowledge or anything but i feel like you're one of those guys who can just go out there and drive and you have like this space of mind uh that you can get into so i wanted to kind of know like do you have any specific like practice for uh like programs you do or do you just really like go out and track and do it or have you has there been a way you kind of done or a, a program of any kind you do when you practice? Uh, I mean, no, I guess I am kind of that chill yeah. all the time. But I mean, my dad would say that I need a perfect car. But I tell him, we kind of just know, he kind of knows what I want, knows what changes to do. So, I mean, yeah, you kind of cut up. I don't, I don't know if I got everything you said, but yeah, I think that's what you said. Yeah. Do what you about mentally that? prepare yourself? Do you like listen to any yeah. music? Drink any Red Bull? Uh, Coffee? Sometimes I did. I listen to music. Okay. What type of music I mean, you listen to gets you pumped up? Before a race, I would say like rap. Not any like mm-hmm. country or anything like that. Oh, Max is happy. What but, type of rap you like? Max is, look, Max is, Max is all about that. I, I hate country rap. music, so. <laughs> yeah, I, like all, I like everything. 80s, everything. That's cool. That's good. Um, one thing I wanted to also ask, because I feel like you're one of the guys who can not have the perfect qualifying and then come out and have a really strong main. I kind of, SIC was one of those races. Obviously, a little bit different because you were with a new car, but... And also, I, I guess Silver State last year, you kind of had a, uh, a rough start. But then mm-hmm. back yeah, I think you had third. a bump from the B-man, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That might be, yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you, because Mayfield has this thing too, where he doesn't have the best qualifiers and is really strong in the main. Do you know that? Or do you like recognize that you have something better in the main? Or is it just like you make setup changes? Or what, well, what you, is it? Do you get more comfortable with the car? Usually it's just like a kind of try and go too fast in qualifying and take it like seating usually when I do yeah. bad in qualifying. And then in the main, it's usually, you know, 30 or 45 minutes. So I'm like super chill, just drive around the track without wrecking. And then I always do better. That's usually what it is. Yeah. I, yeah, I think this is something like, you know, these really talented guys like you and me feel have that you, when you get into the rhythm, like you get really fast lap times because uh, a few years back, a few weeks back here, we had a Jonah Hutton and a Finnish guy. Um, I don't know if you met him before. He's more of a 10 scale driver. Um, you might have met him at Redavan at the Worlds, but he also has that same thing that he might not always be as fast in qualifying. Like I can beat him in qualifying sometimes. But then, you know, when the main start, you know, five minutes in, and then he sort of clicks into a rhythm and you can't go as fast. So do you like realize that yourself? Like when you're doing good, you're like, okay, now I have it. And then you go, or do you have to work up to it? Do you like consciously do it? I guess in the main, it just kind of happens. In qualifying, I'm always just kind of freaking out. 
and got to get like fast laps. Yeah. When I do bad, that's what it usually is. My dad always tells me. And then in the main, I just always know how long it is. And I only just have to not wreck and I'll be fast. And then yeah. you just kind of finish where I finish. Do I have a call question. Him a lot? Do you okay, talk to ahead. him a lot during the main? No, I hate, I hate headsets. So Do you, do you use, use it though? No. You never, not, not at all? You just nope. yell like Mayfield? He just, he'll yell at like, pit stops, but that's it. Okay. Wow. You know, this is also one thing. Mayfield doesn't have it. Jonah, he doesn't have it either. I don't know what it is, but this is like that type of thing that I, because we in this podcast, you know, I geek out like, oh, this driver does this and this and this. But I'm like more amazed now when I hear this like straight from you. Because like, it's something like I can't explain. Like I can't explain why you are so good. So it's really interesting to hear. I I have a question for you. Um, at AMS, he was very fast. We started TQ. Uh, but I kind of saw at the very beginning. I don't know if he was too cautious. It seemed like with Mayfield right behind you. We seen you battle up with Mayfield and Fenn and these guys on the last two years. What is it? Why is it you think it's taken in nitro buggy? You beat them in e buggy and and, and nitro buggy. What is it? I don't want to say this like you're missing something. What is it that you think is the reason why them guys are being so more, much more successful at winning than you are over the last two years? Because you're right in the mix at some points. You know what I mean? Is it is it just them being older and having more race craft, more mature, race maturity? Or what do you think it is that you need to do to really get up there and win it, beat those guys straight up? I really don't know because it kind of just comes easier. Mm -hmm. with e-buggy especially e-buggy and then sometimes truck uh they just always seem to be a little bit better in nitro buggy which i don't know why because i that's the only thing i practice with mm -hmm. is nitro buggy but yeah i mean i just haven't gotten the win yet in that one i don't you come really very know close why. very come very close yeah i've been close do, do you like practice e-buggy e or truggy at all no like what are no, we? Not at all. Never e buggy or druggy. Yeah. yeah. Why you just save yeah. them and then that's wrenching you have to do the next time you race them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think it's crazy see how that is because I I have not heard a single pro say oh I have a e buggy practice there or something. It's very rare. So it's interesting. Do all you, right. Do you have the same setup for both nitro and e buggy? Yeah, basically. Besides maybe a little bit stiffer shocks on e buggy. Yeah. But basically, yeah. All right. I mean, you're obviously considered one of the best racers in the world. Looking around, who do you think is the best racer currently at this moment in the world, eight scale wise? Eight scale, I would say. You can't include yourself, besides yourself. No, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to pick between Dakota or Ryan. Really? You don't have like Ongaro or Kanas in that? I all? would say like in Europe, Kanas. If right now, all right, here's a, I would say. All right, let's go. We're going to, where will be a neutral track? This will be a good question. Where's a like neutral track where everybody can go? Let's say we go to, uh, I don't know, because then J Concept tires are so dominant at those indoor tracks. I don't know. We need a track where like every tire works, it's every type of style for everybody. Uh, and put these Europeans and Americans together and see if they can win. But you you do believe you can beat these guys, right? All of them, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, that's that's part of the, that's winning the battle right there, man. Yeah. I love I love the way how you just say like, it. Yep. You're just like yep. <laughs> very finished. Very finished. Do you have any Finnish uh, blood yeah. in you? I don't think so. Yeah. You definitely are acting very Finnish. Maybe, maybe it's no. I, mean, I, I think I can beat him, but I I haven't beat him yet. And Nitro Buggy, but I think I can. I think you can too. I yeah, I, I know you can. can. I know you can. I know you can. I am a fan boy of uh, Mason Fuller. All right. Um, what do you like to do besides RC in your spare time? Uh, I mean, I got a girlfriend. Okay. Does she is she understanding long. about your your choice, how much time this takes up and all that type of stuff? Yeah, she's pretty supportive of it. She's been to Silver State. 
So, All females like to go to Silver State. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's like the best race for yes. a wife or anyone to go to. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I work out every day. I don't know. That's about it. Our city Would you like to travel more? Travel, travel out of America more? For like a vacation or? No, for RC. Oh, Did you I mean, you yeah. work in RC? You don't you don't travel for vacation much anymore. You stay I mean, home yeah. for vacation. Uh, I mean, I would. Yeah, I would like to. We don't really. I think if you do ten scale, we're going to see you at more races. In Europe, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think that'd be cool. Europe just went over there. He went over to EOS. Max I mean, we don't like, have any plans for it, but yeah, it'd be cool. Man, I, I don't, you know, most things in life you don't have plans for. It just kind of happens. This is RC. Hey, what are you doing? Want to come over and race carpet in Czechoslovakia? There's no more Czechoslovakia. Czechia. <laughs> Czech yeah, Republic. I mean, I would, I would love to do Czech that. Republic. So. Czech Republic. Um. All right. Uh, how is how does Mason Fuller's uh, Mason Fuller's 2024 look like? Do you yeah, have like plans? Do you, have you like have you planned something for this year? Is it just kind of like no, just race? You go to it, you try to win, or do you have like a I I want to go here, practice for a month. How is it? Just kind of chill and try to win. I mean, yeah, just chill. Go to the races, kind of like every year. I don't really have a plan, yeah. You see the guys to, cool as ice, you know. I, like I, no plan. I can't. I can't believe it. It's, it's like crazy because you hear all these guys. You know, like I. I think like a lot of you know, kind of your age guys in America, they kind of like I'm gonna move out to California and do this and this and this. So, do you have that kind of plan at some point? Do you think that? Let, let's say a year from now or something, you're going to move to, let's say, California or the East Coast, you know, Florida or something for the winter and just practice all the time? Or I don't uh, have you thought about happen. that? I mean, yeah. I would love to, like, move to Arizona or Florida just because of the weather, like, all together. But, I mean, I definitely want to go out to, Cam like, Camden's more or to a warmer place just to have someone there to practice with because I'm usually practicing by myself, too. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Uh, but yeah, I don't have any plans to move anytime soon. Stay at home. Stay at home. Flip, fl keep flipping houses and do RC. Yeah, that's the plan. You, know? you can, you, you're 19. You have plenty of world championships ahead of you. Plenty of time to travel. And if you're flipping houses, you can do that. Um, yep. So I guess next race for you, work recording this is the 28th of February. DNC, not too far away, two weeks away. Uh, we're looking forward to it. You're definitely uh, one of the guys that can that can win this. Uh, we wish you all the luck. Before you run off, I just wanted to uh, ask you one more question. Max might have one more question. As a youngster who's made his way in, a young man who's made his way into this industry, uh, uh, you know, you are a professional racer. Uh, I, you, you, you are starting to open up more, you know. You used to be really shy. I wouldn't say shy. You didn't have much to say. You're starting yeah. to open up a little bit more as we do interviews and stuff, which is great. Is what is something you know we need to get more young people like you into this and keep them into this? How do we do that? Like, what would you like to see change as a, a youngster in our industry, as in our sport, to help uh keep people like you and attract more young people into RC? I mean, I think the really the only way would be to either have it in schools or on TV, but is there really a way to do that? Probably not with how we have everything. Well, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, with our it. format and all that type of stuff, qualifying the way it's done and all that stuff, but yeah, there's uh, no way to do it. Obviously, you think it's cool, it's not easy, right? It's obviously not easy because if it was, everybody would do it, uh, and they would be in your position that you're at. But, uh, I think when you do talk, when you do okay, so when you do talk to your friends of your age, you just you're just out of high school, right? You've been out now for about a year and a bit now. Mm -hmm. What do they say when, like, hey, this is what I do for, I guess, for a living? I mean, they think it's pretty wild. Everyone I talk to thinks it's pretty. They don't know how it's, how I'm actually making money at it, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't understand how we all make money at it either. I know how, yeah. but, uh, I, I mean, it's, it is a difficult thing to say. I mean, I, I just think, like, 
we don't see many people your age that are good like you that are rising stars that are up in the top when you talk about top five racers in the world you mentioned a lot in that um we don't see that you know it's once in a while and i i don't think and it's not even once in a while it comes once in a blue moon like the last person probably was spencer rifkin i think who was winning at a young yeah. age and, and all that type of stuff <clears throat> obviously we have a little bum who's still young but uh we need to get more people we need to make rc cooler too do you think we need to make it a little bit more professional like we need to know who professional drivers are at races and do you think like you could <clears throat> like think about this as a full sport if this was like real sport you would have to have a pr agent <clears throat> you'd have to do pr classes like interview classes all that type of stuff do you think we yeah. should be going in that direction for rc do you think you'll see guys your age going as social media becomes more popular you're not that much on pop on social media you do have something but mm. not a lot do you think that's yeah. a way we're going to see RC go as a, a more professional side of things as more younger races come up? Yeah, I mean, I think the social media, it's, especially for like the lower guys, that's like a lot of it, what it is, just social media mm -hmm. and helping guys. But yeah, I mean, I think it this should definitely be more professional with like mm -hmm. the interviews and stuff at the races. But how does how one it. person become a pro? You know, could you give me a definite route how you became to where you are? There is no def definite plan. You went out, you did well at races, right? I mean, Various yeah, races around the world, around America. Some people might even say I'm not even pro. I don't know. I mean, how do you even know if a guy is pro or not? I mean, you may not be making like $150,000 at this, which is even in the whole scheme of like pro world racing, it's not a lot. Yeah. But I'm sure you're making some money at this. Like, I don't, you know, I, I don't think you're making. That's the other misconception is like, as soon as you get there, people think you're making all this type of money. I don't, I don't think you are. You know, I just know how, you know, I know how economics work a little bit, mm -hmm. not my own too much. And it's obvious to see a uh, big team, big European team as well. So lots of mouths to feed, you know, and yeah. a very small and slim industry. Max, you have a yeah. question for, Iceman? I don't know. Not really. I think no it's been great kind of seeing because, yeah, the perspective is very different to what I'm, you know, used to for myself because I'm more focused on like, you know, the car and, and stuff like this where I think Mason is more, you know, like he's a, like a driver, like an RC <laughs> driver, you know? Kind of, kind of like, you know, you see these guys from like motocross or, you know, um, like full scale cars. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's also important to have to be that good, be at that top level, like to be able to just focus on the driving to be better as a driver. So it's been kind of interesting to hear. Like, yeah. Also, maybe, okay, maybe I have one question Ooh. and it's kind of like, um, do you see yourself, you know, racing kind of the way you are, or do you kind of want to pursue to be more involved in RC? Because obviously now from what I kind of gather, you enjoy like also flipping houses and kind of doing regular job on the side. Do you kind of like want to get rid of that and make more money of RC? Or do you kind of, do you feel happy having a little bit of a balance there? I mean, my goal, with s works uh and my companies i got now like nitro pro is to kind of do what jared was doing tivo like build or like just sell kind of just help people out and build kits sell servos stuff like that but i think i definitely need to uh keep flipping houses or something like that to have you know you definitely need to keep flipping houses because yeah, flipping houses is a lot more money than building rc kits that's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. All right, man. Well, we're glad to have you on. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we, we wanted to, uh, we, you know, we wanted to ask you something before we let you leave. Uh, it's something very important to us. Uh, and we wanted to know, you know, we've been meaning to ask you. We've been, we've been great supporters of you. But we kind of want to add you and doctrinate you into the NNRC team. We don't have any American drivers right now besides Matty G. And he's not really a driver. 
You know, you know even doctor, just as Maddie G, but he's oh, like okay, Mexican American. Oh, Tebow, but he's not avidly yeah. actively racing now. Yeah. So you know, he's kind of like, you know, moved away from our racers. So we want to add you. We want to like you, Sir Mason Fuller, and Caden. We'll add Caden. We'll see how he does. But Max was asking personally. Now I don't know if this conflicts with any of your other sponsors, but we've been pretty good, and. You know, we just want to make you an official NNRC driver. Max doesn't want to. He's smiling because he knows that this means a lot to me. He said, if you say no, I'll cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No pressure, but Keaton will be very <laughs> sad if you decline. <laughs> no, I accept. Look, see, look at that. We knight you. Look, this is my sword, my scissors. We knight you. Sir Mason the Fuller. Team Fuller. I now it. NNRC driver. No, man, we appreciate it. Um, you know, become really good friends with your dad, your mom, great RC family, great people. Obviously, you know, we know Ashton and stuff together, and it's always good to see you at the races. I want to see you win these races because I think once that floodgate opens, it's gonna be very hard to beat you. And I want to see you get over to Europe and Japan, and I want to see you live the RC life like these old guys, these older guys just do traveling to England, and France, and Italy. And South Africa and Thailand and Vietnam and all these. That's where Little Bomb's off to, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I want to see you be able to do all that type of stuff. That's a wonderful life. Yeah, I Still many more countries I want to go to. <clears throat> um, all right, Max. Say goodbye to Mason. We're going to let him go. Yeah, it was great. Great to have you. I don't think we have really talked that much before. Kind of like said hi before. So it was great meeting yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hopefully too. we'll get you on uh, get you on the podcast sometime soon as well Max looks at you like an enigma right now I think yeah I'm, I'm amazed like I have to I have to uh, say uh, he's probably gonna message you and I think if you try this we can, get you, we can shave two tenths of a second off your lap yeah. I don't know you're like you're like really cool about everything I he's think that's ice man. yeah you, I Have kind you of thought like oh, ice man like he can't be that much of an ice man but you really are. So I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit amazed at that. Have you never seen Top Gun? I haven't. It's cool, like Val Kilmer in the eighties. <laughs> the Ice Man. Yeah. But I, right, I want to, I want to see you do good at uh, at races. Yep. This year. I think, I think right now you're, uh, you're at a point where you can really, you know, break through. So it's be interesting to see. And I want to see you race more tennis skill because I think you'll be really good at tennis skill. Yeah, I think Absolutely. I will be. Absolutely. That's the goal. So, tell Caden I said what's up. Uh, tell your dad and mom I said hello. Good luck at DNC, man. I think you can win that shit. Yeah, we'll try. So we'll see. Good luck. Get focused. All right, everybody. Mason Fuller, the Iceman, 19 year old pro S Works driver. Is it Twerks or S Works? Is it S Works? I thought it was S Works. I mean, I think it's S Works. I say S Works too. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll let you get back to being a, a young man. And enjoying yourself and not thinking about RC. We appreciate your time. Max, say goodbye. Like this. He's goodbye. The, 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 the this is, this is my goodbye. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Mason. Thank you. All righty then. Thank you, Mason, for your time. Uh, thank you for now becoming an official NNRC driver. We uh, I am jumping for joy over here. Max tried to cast doubts on my dreams by saying he might say no. Um, great chat with Max. I like I like having you on board. I see you're not the interview thing is new for you too because you're not used to interviewing yeah. people, but you should get used to it because we're going to try and send you off to the Euros to do some interviews up there. All right, Max. Uh, we're not going to do the hot and cold segment this week. Uh, I know you you don't have much time. It's getting late as we do record. We still have a plethora of questions we have to answer, but we're going to do them as attached to some of the podcasts uh, that I've interviewed her lately and release them at later dates. But we do have some upcoming races that we have to talk to. Obviously, uh, they are brought to you by Sidewinder Fuel. Sidewinder Fuel. Uh, Morgan Fuel has been collaborating with many of the world's top drivers for over the last 40 years. This has enabled us to test our fuels in many of the most challenging situations and take the development of competition fuels to the next level. That result is Sidewinder, the market's most powerful racing fuel. This race fuel, race fuel has been track tested and proven by national and world champions such as Ryan Cavallari, Ryan Mayfield, Greg the Toad Degani, Mark Pavitas, and many more. Their current top driver is Little Bump. These drivers appreciate that Sidewinder is blended perfectly for high performance needs 
of competitive competitive racing. Don't let victory slip through your fingers. Purchase Sidewinder today. All right, Max. So races coming up. Man, I think all eyes right now are on March 13th to 17th, the Dark Nitro Challenge. Um, two weeks away. Two weeks away. I'll actually be in... Well, we do have the Palmetto Classic 10 scale Nats warm-up the weekend before. I'm not going to that. But I'll be in Florida at this race. The 17th to Sunday, I'll probably be at Dean's All Out if his new track is... Not Dean's All Out, but his new indoor track. But, uh, man, DNC coming up fast. I... Part of me is like, man, I wish I was going. But I'm also like, if I was going on my own, it would be so expensive. So I'm part like, I'm, I mean, I probably could have went, but I am getting excited for the race, right? I am getting yeah. excited to see the top guys go at it again. Uh, I am, I'm starting to get the, the tingle, like, you know, DNC tingle. I, I think, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So not going this year is going to make me want to go on go next year. So we'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm getting so excited for this race. I'm getting so excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, up next, and uh, we might as well play the video for it. We have the International Buggy Challenge that's coming up right after this. Uh, but before that, actually, it will also be FRCC Callahan, which I'll be attending in uh, in Florida. But uh, I hope I look forward to seeing uh, people coming to the IBC, the International Buggy Challenge 2024 in Barcelos, Portugal. I will see you all there. That's it. say a big thank you to everybody in portugal i'm looking forward to my two weeks in portugal that's right two weeks as i'll be there for the ibc as well as the ifmar e buggy world cup and uh happening the following weekend of that but also happening in the usa will be that weekend pmb so we actually have dnc and pmb two big races coming up really back to back are uh, going to be big big races for our pro guys and points as well so it's going to be interesting to see how the points shake out after that I'll be over in the International Buggy Challenge. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Then I we have the Top Notch Series opener at Thunder Alley, April 6th. Uh, that's the same weekend as Psycho Nitro Blast, which I'm looking forward to. I'll be watching that as well. Uh, 10 Scale Offered Dark Nationals is happening April 17th to 21st. I'll be there for that. I'll be there in uh, FRS. I'll be in Mills Pond the weekend before that. We have uh, that same weekend, we have Wally's race, the Ryan Mayfield Nitro, the RM2 movement, I think it's called Nitro RC Supercross Championship. So Wally's putting up a whole different format. Like he's making people actually use numbers too, right? That you have to see. So he's doing a special race that's going to have like motocross format, double 15, double 15 minute mains for Nitro and stuff. I need to get him on her to talk about that. Following weekend, we have the North Georgia Shootout, April 25th, 2028th. Then we actually have the, the following weekend after that, I'll be attending the uh, FRCC 10 scale race at Beachline. Then we have April 18th. Wow, all these, it's April is jam packed with racing all around the world, dude. I'm just looking at Asian Buggy Championships Round 2, April 18th to 21st of April in Circular Verde, Manila. Wow, I want to go to that. Lots of racing, lots of racing. Then we have Silver State coming up. After that, Nationals, uh, Miles Race, Euros, 10th scale. Well, yeah, lots of racing. RC Program, Brent's Race. We have Wicked Weekend coming up. Dude, we thought that RC season, like 8th scale season was booming. Now it's going to be booming all year long. Yeah. It's only really going to slow down December, January. Yeah, April is crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, um, if you guys want to attend any of those races, go check them out. RC sign up has them. If you're gonna be at any of those races that I'm gonna be attending, come out, say hello, get some stickers, get some gear from me. We appreciate it. We greatly appreciate it, Max. I think that's it, man. I don't think we're gonna um, another 
two and a half hour short podcast for us, her. That was a good talk with Mason, though. Um, yeah. Anything you want to say before we conclude her, Max? I don't know. We got to do questions podcast. Yeah, we're going to do next, so, Maybe next week we can do questions. Well, we have so what it is, I have, I have various different interviews with different people. And uh, while I'm on the road, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna start doing questions next week. I'm gonna release them with your questions. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually interviewing JQ tomorrow. I think that's gonna be a standalone podcast as well. Uh, but yeah, man, mm, this weekend no real racing going on. I don't think. I, yeah, I'm I can't sure think of any. Oh, the ten scale racing FRCC. I'll be tuning into that, watching that. Oh yeah, that's gonna be at SNS. But I think we actually aren't got any. Don't have any real. I, I'm probably wrong. Probably going to be, who knows, man. Oh, Nationals. Robert told me, he said, oh, yes, you watched the coverage from the Nationals this weekend uh, over in Spain. They had really good coverage last weekend. So he said he's going to that, but he's not prepared. I don't know how he's getting out of the house after a week having, after having a baby. But everything seems, I was talking to him, seems to be good. Oh, 36 Mood, check out his uh, website. He just opened that up. It looks pretty good as well. All right, Max, I think that's it, man. I want to say a big thank you to Hot Race. Hires for all their support. We didn't get into the Hot & Co. Uh, section this week. I did send a list of people who won Hot Race tires off to Nicola this week. So hopefully you guys will be getting them. Thank you, Nicola, for all his hard work. I was like, we'll see you at DNC. I'm like, uh, no, not going to be there. Part of me wants to be there. But I'll be in America, but just not there. Max? I think, I think DNC will kind of be the big fight of Hot Race and J-Concepts. Because J-Concepts has been generally strong there. But Ron Fogg won the race with hot race tires a uh, few years back. A lot of guys been fast with hot race tires there. So I think this will be really good. Uh, you won last year? Wasn't, uh, didn't make Mayfield Mayfield won that? last year. Yeah, yeah. but I think the, the last time it was outdoors, uh, Ron Fogg was fifth with hot race. Yeah, there was... can't think of other others who was there, but hot race has been good at this race in general. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it will be good. I, I am looking forward to seeing JCC on J Concepts out there. So it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, like I said, DNC starting to hype up. You know, you, you, we'll talk more about I think we'll talk about more about DNC on our next podcast as we lead up to it. We're going to have to figure out once the race happens, I'm going to have a couple of days off. We're going to have to get together and record about that uh, when I'm in America. All right. Well, I think that's it for everybody this week. Once again, thank you to Mason for all his time. We greatly appreciate it. We greatly appreciate all you guys out there that support us. Thank you to the NNRC squad. We can't do it without you guys. Don't forget to hit those like, sub, notification buttons, leave a comment, share, leave a review if you listen to us on the audio only. If you prefer to listen to us on the audio, that's fine too, but come over and give us a like on the Facebook. We're trying to get to 5K. Don't forget all the rest of our social media outlets as well. Instagram, TikTok, and um, Facebook. We're all trying to get to some milestones at that. I haven't posted too much on TikTok lately. I haven't been traveling. Uh, hopefully this week we get some weather. I'm going to get out and do some RC. Max, I was supposed to go on to watch some RC this weekend, but I couldn't make it. I was upset. It was a good race too. The, dude, I have to say that the the uh, on-road guys down here in the DR are really doing a really good job of RC. I wish we yes. could get to do that. Yeah, so, Southern America. Well, um, the, like Shane Ling and his guys, and they invited me to come down this past weekend, and I was going to take my kids, but I just couldn't swing it. I was like, just, it's a three and a half hour drive, and it's ex, it's an expensive day out with the kids. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, But they're doing great things. Uh, looking forward to getting on there and checking out a race. I, I need to get a GT and get my car and get my son. I want an electric one. I want him to have a, a nitro one. Um, yeah, man. Thank you to all the all the patrons of the NNRC, the YouTube members. We greatly appreciate you guys' support. We can't do it without you guys if you wish to join us. And support the podcast a little bit. Actually, you can. Links for that in the written description of this podcast. Thank you to all of these companies. Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, Corsa Tech USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC, Racecraft USA, RC Box Club, Call RC, Elite RC Productions. Good luck to them this weekend and everybody going to the Florida RC Championships of SNS Hobbies. RC Body Armor, SJ Racing Builds, House of RC, RCGP, David Ronafalk, 
Jared Tebow, Robert Badia, Alexander Habrak, Maddie G, Paco, Ivan, and you know Hatman, and our new, new indoctrined knight in our NNRC army. Mason Fuller. We're going to have to, you know, he's going to have to get him one of these, you know? Yeah, he'll match his shirt, too. Yeah, we're going to have to get him a shirt. And an invisible speed 2.0 book in red. You know, JQ got so mad at me at DNC last year for wearing my red hoodie. He said I should go sit in the SRX team because I look like I belong in the SRX team because I had the only person in the whole my Aco tent. If a black, every you know, my Aco, every black and yellow. Well, Keenan's in there with his bright red hat and bright red uh, sweat top. And you know what? This guy comes out and he's got a red book. I tell you, that JQ. Max, thank you for your time. Enjoy your weekend, good buddy, and uh, go get some rest. You got a you got an early trip ahead of you. And uh, hey, by the way, links for all of those companies are in the written description of this podcast. Affiliate links, coupon codes, all that stuff. So help us out. Show the sponsors some love. Show the podcast love. Max, I think that's it. Before we go, we have to have the obligatory. Like, share, comment for Max and Max and Lefty. We're out. You guys see you later. It's so nice that you, you, you know, you don't have to worry about battery power anymore. No you just plugged yeah, in. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Don't see you have, later. Have to stress about it. See you later, Thug Smurf Max. Uh, Thug Smurf or Lumberjack. We'll see you later. Have a good evening. Bye, everybody. Have a good have a safe weekend of RC. <laughs>